We bid you a very pleasant good afternoon and welcome to O'Brien Stadium. And we are ready for 2018 Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. And we say in a beautiful, cloudy, but warm day, we're ready to go. We welcome you and thank you for being with us here. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A of Elizabeth. And we get ready to go. The Cyclones coming off that big win over Pigeon Forge on Friday night. Come from behind, 5-4, to 8-inning victory of the team that eliminated Elizabeth a year ago. They went on to the state tournament and we came back to Carter County. Well, Friday we got... Big old dose of sweet revenge beating the Tigers 5-4 to four in eight innings. And so uh, we turn our attention now a little closer to home as we have a, another good ball club coming in here. Maybe not the caliber of Pigeon Forge, a state tournament appearance team a year ago, but a very good team nonetheless. 6-3, and three, the Junior Bucks of University High in Johnson City. Of course, the Cyclones now with a record of 4-2. and two, And so uh, this is the spring break week for Elizabeth and City Schools. And yet... Coach Presley's got to get a game in today, so it'll be a varsity game first, a JV game to follow. And so Trey Shannon will be on the mound this afternoon for the Cyclones and Ryan Presnell. And so Jack Bimberg will go for University High. And so we're ready to go for Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. We'll take this break, come right back, and we'll get you ready to go with starting lineups and first pitch. All this brought to you by the good folks from Chick-fil-A here in Elizabeth. And be sure if you're tuning in to be sure and like us and share us and Get the word out to folks here this afternoon. I know Coach Presnell, we sent out a post on the Betsy Baseball Facebook page. He lost his phone or something happened over the last couple of days. He had to get a new phone, so he's not been able to upgrade things. So we sent out a post. hope it went out. I'm not real proficient with the cell phone either, but uh, we hope that it did go out. And so here we go. Ready to go for this one. Of course, we'll be off until Monday. The next week, we crank it up big time. A lot of baseball next week. But today, the Cyclones and the University of High Junior Bucks. Four and two Elizabethan, six and three University High. We'll come back with more right after this break from Chick fil A and Carter County Bank. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. And real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. In entertainment news, this year it's all about the mini series. In pop culture news, mini everything. Because, aww. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Minis until 10.30 a.m. This is Andrew McKeon, president of Carter County Bank. Carter County is blessed with amazing characteristics. Natural beauty, caring people, and locally owned small businesses all make our community one of the best places in America to live. Remember to support Carter County small businesses with your purchases, because for every $100 you spend at a Carter County owned business, $45 stays here to create local jobs and support our schools. When you spend $100 at a national chain store, only $14 remains in our community. So no matter where you roam, hurry back home. Let's pull together to support local business and make our community even better. Carter County Bank is big on small business. Locally owned and managed to support our first priority, Carter County, and the people who live here. Back at O'Brien Field again, Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Let's set the standings for you going into action today across and also go back and see what happened yesterday. Of course, University High got a big win, just a doubleheader sweep over the Tri-City Flames, 8-1 to in the first game and 12-4 to in the second game to run their record now to 6-3 and in the Watauga Valley Conference, the overall record. Elizabeth, and of course, at 4-2. From yesterday, Dobbins is going to be Crockett, one nothing. Science Hill all over Daniel Boone, eleven to one. It was Cherokee defeating Volunteers, seven nothing. Solomon South in conference play, all over Happy Valley, twelve to two. Solomon East in conference play beat Unicoi County in a big upset, eleven to eight, or maybe not. East got him eleven to eight. Solomon Central defeated Johnson County, eleven to six, in the three Rivers Conference action from yesterday. Again, University High taking two from the Tri Cities Flames, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes baseball team. You got them again, 8-1 to one to the opener, 12-4 to four in the nightcap. Unique over North Green, 3-2. And Sullivan North, a 15-13 to 13 called game winner of the Hampton Bulldogs. There again in the Watauga Valley Conference. Standings in the Three Rivers Conference. Sullivan Central, Unicoi County, Sullivan East, all 3-1. and one. Happy Valley at 1-1. One and one. The Cyclones at 1-2. and two. Sullivan South at 1-4. And, and Johnson County currently in the cellar of the Three Rivers Conference race with a record of 0 and two for University High and their conference, Watauga Valley Conference, Unica, University High both two and zero, Hampton two and one, Sullivan North at one and one, Cloudland at zero and two, and North Green at zero and three. Action today 
around the area. Daniel Boone at Sciencesville again. The format goes back and forth, so the home and away series continues. And of course, great days for baseball. It's hard to believe Wednesday, or rather Saturday and Sunday, it's pouring down the rain and cold, and but it is gorgeous out here today. Right around 68 degrees game time temperature. Boone at Science Hill this afternoon. Dobbins Bennett in Jonesboro to battle Crockett. Cherokee and Volunteer. Tennessee High, Virginia High. The bragging rights of Bristol on the line, as is the bragging rights of Hawkins County. Cherokee got them pretty good yesterday, seven nothing. They'll play that one again today in Churchill. Also, you have Unicoi County taking on. Uh, the rematch with Sullivan East. Happy Valley at Sullivan South. University High here against Elizabethan. Non-conference game. North Green at Unica. Hampton at Sullivan North. And Cloudland will be taking on the Tri-City Flames again. The FCA baseball team uh, representing the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. One of our great sponsors here on Elizabethan Cyclone Baseball. So, we'll take a quick break. We'll come right back and we'll be ready to roll with starting lineups right after you hear this from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and from our good friend Jim Klein at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance. Again, like us and share us. Let folks know we're out there today. TomTaylorSports.com on the website or on the Facebook page, The Tom Taylor Sports Show. And again, like us and share us and let folks know uh, wherever you are that we've got Cyclone Baseball coming up. Starting line up next here as we bring it to you from O'Brien Field. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here at the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, we follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400, your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, providing tax, accounting, and audit services in East Tennessee for over 50 years. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, the region's largest firm, and serves individuals, family businesses, health care, nonprofits, manufacturers, and many more industries. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall's Wealth Management, celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. BCS Wealth Management is a full-service financial firm, providing personal financial planning, investments, and group benefits. For more information, please call 423-282-4511. That's 282-4511 or on the web at bcscpa.com. That's bcscpa.com. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, proud sponsor of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. If you're ready now, the starting lineups. First off, I want to say hello to Lisa Leo. Hello, Lisa. Also to Kurt Stevenson and Kelly Crockett Merritt and Thomas Dillard watching already and listening. So we thank you wherever you may be. Let's give you the starting lineup. First off, for the visitors, University of High Junior Bucks at 6 and 3. Leading off and playing center field will be Cass Blevins. Batting second and playing third base will be Jacob Hare. Batting third, the second baseman, Carter Pollock. Cleanup batter will be your pitcher this afternoon, Jack Bimbry. Batting fifth and playing uh, left field will be Jake Oligny. Batting sixth and playing right field for University High, Caleb Meredith. And the bottom three, Bryn Hare at first base, A.J. Simmerly at shortstop, Hunter Seahorn doing the catching. Again for University High in order, Blevins in center. Here, Jacob at third base, Pollock at second, Bembry pitching, Oligny in left field, 
Meredith in right field, Hare Brent at first base, uh, Simile at shortstop, and Hunter Seahorn doing the catching. For the Cyclones, at four up and two down here so far in 2018, leading off and playing second base, Ethan Eggleston. Batting second and playing center field will be Ryan Wetzel. Evan Carter will bat third and play left field with Corey Russell, the shortstop, batting fourth. Batting fifth, your DH for the pitcher, Trey Shine, will be Matthew Daly. Batting sixth for Elizabeth and playing right field, Logan Eastep. Batting seventh and doing the catching, Evan Perkins. Lawson Wagner, your third baseman, will bat eighth and batting ninth and playing first base, Nick Johnson. Again, Eggleston at second, Wetzel in center, Carter in left, Russell shortstop, Daly DHing for Shawn the pitcher, Eastep in right. Perkins catching, Wagner at third, and Johnson at first base. We'll get it started. We've got first pitch coming up next. It'll be the Cyclones and the University of High Junior Bucks. Be sure and let them know we're out there again. Like us and share us, as we said, and we would appreciate that very much. All you got to do is go to uh, TomTaylorSports.com and hit Listen Live or click Listen Live or go to the Facebook page, The Tom Taylor Sports Show, and there we be. Brought to you by the great folks from Chick-fil-A and also Appalachian, oh, the good folks, Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union. We'll come right back with first pitch after this. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. $10,500 in down payment assistance, and you could be eligible. That's right. Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union, helping more than 50 families achieve home ownership. And for many, down payment assistance has meant the difference between renting and owning. You could be eligible. For more information, go to the web at myacfcu.org. Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union, with branches in Gray, Johnson City, Rogersville, Kingsport, Jonesboro, Norton, Virginia, in Kentucky, Berea, McKee, and Boonville, Kentucky. MyACFCU.org. $10,500 in down payment assistance, and you could be eligible. For more information, simply call 1-800-378-3778 or go to the web at MyACFCU.org. Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union, proud member of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Back again, ready to go and join in the broadcast booth. How about it? My man who is all about it. That will be our buddy Tommy Tipton back from his golf trip, wherever he was, doing whatever he's doing, I guess, chasing a little white ball, right? I was. It was cold, too. <laughs> Where'd you go? Myrtle Beach. <laughs> it's supposed to be nice. It was. Went to Myrtle Beach to get cold. It was uh, cloudy, windy, and about 55. Wow. Sunday morning, wind chill was 37 in Myrtle Beach. In Myrtle Beach. So we came home early. <laughs> did you eat any seafood for me? I did. What did you eat for me? We had Captain George's. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Who all went? Uh, gosh, there's 28 guys that went. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. It's the 36th uh, year of the golf trip from the originals. Wow. So it's a big tradition for a lot of guys in, in the area. A lot of fun. Let's go ahead and bring it right up, and let's go ahead and bring it to you, the National Anthem right here on Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. We'll keep it right here. Always get into it down there. I like it. <laughs> Doing the PA. So, again, ready to go. We thank you for being with us. And again, we see on the screen it says Pigeon Forge, and I know that, but it's uh, 
I don't know how to change it, and my IT guy's in the meeting, so there you go. And I apologize, but we're not at Pigeon Forge. We are University High here today, Cyclone Baseball. But we see that big, proud red Chick-fil-A logo in the corner. Got to have that up there. So uh, if you're listening, just know that it's not Pigeon Forge. It is University High. Hello to Steve McCauley, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Chase Dixon, Lisa Lale, again, Kelly Mer- Kelly Merritt, rather, Thomas Dillard watching. Thank you. Kurt Stevenson. Hey, Tom, back with you this afternoon. He was with me on the show this morning. Glad to see you. Thank you, my friend. So, Tommy, you weren't there. We were there, obviously, and it was a heck of a ball game. As Trey Shown going through his warm-up paces here. But uh, i tell you what, that was a great, great baseball game. Beat a great baseball team in Pigeon Forge. And, wow, I'm, a, I'm excited about where this team's will go now. That was a big, big win. I heard uh, the comeback was, was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. To Got call. down early and then came back, right? Oh, yeah. We were down. Hello, Vince Red, watching the show. Yeah, we were down uh, 4 nothing going to the bottom of the seventh. And we were the home team. We put four on the board, went back top of the inning, top of the eighth, put them out one, two, three, and then we got some bang-bang plays and a sack fly by, by Wagner, played T-step for the winning run five to four. Place went nuts, the Cyclone fans. It was quite a moment. And so psychologically, this is a big game for this team to come back and beat the team and put you out last year. So you got to feel like they'll come back up with a little swagger for the rest of the season, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. And so... Tell me about the Frosted Sunrise, brand new from Chick-fil-A, and we'll give the starting numbers to Trey Shown here. Been out a couple of weeks. Uh, it's pretty popular. Um, got uh, orange juice, ice cream mix all blended up together. Just two ingredients, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Come by in the morning or the afternoon, get one of those, and... and uh, set you free. That's right. It'll set you free. Hello, Bubba. He's in here. I've got my man, Brother Hartley's going to talk to us here in a little while. Look at him. Brought me a water. Bless his heart. Just like the old times. See him there in the back. My man's got his Duke shirt on. All right, here's Cass Blevins. Here's Trey Shown going, starting for the third time this season with a record of one and one. Shown seven hits, five runs, uh, none of those earned. He's walked three and leads the club rather in strikeouts with 11. First pitch, and it's a ball downstairs. This one's underway. So, Trey Shown defensively for Elizabeth and Wagner at third, Russell at short. Eggleston at second, Johnson at first, bad handle foul to the backstop, and it's one ball, one strike. Two men working it today, of course, the men in blue. In University High coming off a two big two game sweep of the FCA Flames yesterday. There's a chopper, slow ground ball, three hopper to Eggleston at second, bobbles, and all hands are safe, E4. And rolled up his arm, and he couldn't control it, and it's an E4, and he's on. It's Cass Blevins with the leadoff. Ground ball, E4 charge to Ethan Eggleston. Tough break, Tommy. It was there and just rolled up his arm and couldn't couldn't pull it in. That's the way it goes, my friend. Yeah, it looks like he just waited on a little too long. Yeah. Should probably should have charged it and been more aggress- aggressive with it. Here's third baseman Jacob Hare, University High again, an all-traveling kind of charcoal gray with blue sleeves and white helmets. Snap throw to first and back in standing for the... Cyclones, they are in all white, black numerals, white caps, big orange E trimmed out in black, and black bills. So Blevins at first, Johnson paying attention to him, so is Shown. This one inside, ball one. And Trey leads the club in strikeouts with 11. As a staff, they've got 38 punch outs so far through six ball games. You can do the math. A little over six Ks a game on the average with this pitching staff. Shown brings it. Fly ball, center field. Wetzel coming hard as a fall, and he makes a great catch down around his knees. And nice play by Ryan Wetzel. Broke back, then broke in, and made a catch. He was angling towards the first base first base bag. Tommy, out there in the shallow right center field, makes a catch on a sinking line drive. Nice play, Wetzel, and there's one away. Great hustle on that play, no doubt. I thought maybe he would snap throw behind the runner, but he decided not to. So you're one out batter. Let's get, let's get back up here on the screen and. Let's go there right there. Strike call to Carter Pollock, the second baseman. P-O-L-L-A-C-K. One out, one on to the top of the first. Just got started. Cyclones four and two. University high at six and three. Throw to first. Back in diving at first safely. He applies a tag on his lower part of his back, but he's back in safely. And so Sean will lean back in and get his sign, the lanky right-hander. Another throw to first. Same thing. And that was a little bit closer that time, Tommy. Huh. He's working him a little bit over there. There was. That was uh, a little too close for cover for UH. Shound 
Pretty good pickoff move for a righty. Brings the play with ground ball back over the mound. Field of Russell. He'll make the sure throw to first and got him. Runner stops at second. Fielder's choice in the play. You go four to three on the put out. Two out. Runner stays on. Runner erased at second base. And we'll keep it right here for Jack Bembry, the pitcher for University High. I think we had an easy double play there if he wouldn't have been running. He was a dead duck, but he got a pretty good jump off of Shannon. So Corey got the sure out at first, four to three on the fielder's choice. I'm sorry, six to three on the fielder's choice. Pitching and an off-speed pitch strike call. Nice pitch. Saw him break from up here. Six to three on the fielder's choice. From Russell to Johnson at first, two down, runner at second. Trey Shannon to the belt. Brings it. Ground ball. They're taking some hacks at him, and it's a foul ball, first base side. I'll say this, Tommy, they've come out swinging the stick. They have, and Chowns are on strikes. It's a yep. good, that's a good mix. Yep. This is Bembry, your cleanup batter, who is, again, the university high pitcher. So, pitcher versus pitcher, Trey Shown brings it. And a foul tip off the shin guard of Evan Perkins. Count holds and no balls and two strikes to the two out batter for continues. Jake Oligny is on deck. By the way, my man down there doing the PA is doing a great job. Both guys. Everett and Big Nick. There you go. Nick told me his name is Oligny. I said, all right, you the man with the pronunciations brings it upstairs and it's a one ball, two strike count. And defensively, Wagner at third, short is Corey Russell, second, Ethan Eggleston, first, Johnson. Carter in left, Wetzel in center, and Logan East step in right. Perkins behind the plate. Chown brings it and framed up Evan Perkins, but too low. Two balls and two strikes. Bembry, your two out right handed batter, choking up on the stick, wearing those bright yellow gloves, and now time is called. I like his umpire. He gets out there. He lets you. He lets you know. He's uh, Sullivan East guy. That's who I thought that was behind old Blake, the big man. And his name James Brown or something. Oh yeah. Outside full count. He's a good. He's a good umpire. That's the wrong James Brown. <laughs> oh gosh, you're right. He had a kid who played up here a couple of years ago. Big old kid. He's uh, Coach Dyer's assistant coach for many years. You're right. Yep. Full count. Swing and a miss. Chown gets strikeout number 12 of the season, and that is the inning. No runs, no hits, one error, one man left. We played a half inning. We'll come right back after you hear this from Tommy's Place. That would be the good folks at Chick-fil-A right after this on Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. In entertainment news, this year it's all about the mini series. In pop culture news, mini everything. Because, aww. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Minis until 10.30 a.m. This is Andrew McKeon, president of Carter County Bank. Carter County is blessed with amazing characteristics. Natural beauty, caring people, and locally owned small businesses all make our community one of the best places in America to live. Remember to support Carter County small businesses with your purchases because for every $100 you spend at a Carter County owned business, $45 stays here to create local jobs and support our schools. When you spend $100 at a national chain store, only $14 remains in our community. So no matter where you roam, hurry back home. Let's pull together to support local business and make our community even Back again at O'Brien Field. Bembry, the right-hander, getting ready to go to work against the Elizabeth and Cyclones. Hello to Sarah Presnell, the first lady of Cyclone Baseball. to be Mama Presnell. So hello to you. Thank you. One of our great sponsors. Of course, she is there and part of it. Thank you. Blackburn Childers and Stigall. Here's Ethan Eggleston leading things off, the second baseman. Eggleston batting on the season. 
been struggling. He's batting 111, but here's a good time to get it turned around. He's two for 18 and misses inside ball one. Bembry and Seahorn, pitcher, catcher, respectively, for University High. Bembry brings it. Uh, Ethan sees it down low, and it's two balls and no strikes. Bottom of the first, no score. Eggleston, Wetzel, Carter, and we hope a whole bunch more here. Ethan waits on it, and it's ball three. That's what drive me nuts who that umpire is, because I can see him. He's been, he was on Coach Dyer's bench, assistant coach for many, many years. Strike a call, taking all the way, three and one. <sighs> Dad gum. It's going to drive me nuts. Dr. Barry Walton's watching. Thank you, my friend. This one bounced up there. Eggleston draws a leadoff walk and down to first he trots. Ethan Eggleston in the walk category, number seven of the season for Ethan. Here's Wetzel. Wetzel batting 591. No homers, need to RBIs. He scored nine times. Leads the club in that category, the RBI category. He's got a triple and 11 base hits, 11 singles, and 13 hits all told. 13 for 22 so far in the season. First pitch is a belt high fastball strike call to the right hand batter. Carter, how many, how many touchdowns did he catch? <laughs> He made some really good catches, too. Oh, baby. He helped, he helped Everett out a lot. <laughs> stood up and this kid got it. Throw to first, back in Eggleston. Diving safely back into first base. So Dr. Barry Walton is watching. Thank you, my friend, one of our great sponsors. On the Tom Taylor Sports Show, Bembry brings it. And he makes contact right back to the box. Good jump by Eggleston. All he can do is go to first, one to three on the put out. That one's up out of the strike zone. Wetzel went after it anyway. Fielder's choice, one to three. Eggleston stops at second. One out, one on for Evan Carter. Carter batting 316. Again, Carter, no homers and six runs knocked in. Men on base, Evan Carter hitting a very healthy 421. So number 11 leans in. Bembry working from the stretch and it misses upstairs ball one. So Eggleston dancing around out at second. One out, one on. We're live here again at O'Brien Stadium, home of the Twins, for at least one more year. We were told that the check they were waiting on from the Minnesota organization did not come. There's a strike call caught the outside corner, 1-1, one one, which is unfortunate. So Twins will be here this year. Maybe they can pull one out of that and keep them, but I would think there'll be other Major League Baseball teams want to put a team in here in Carter County. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, hope so. There's a bat handle flare down the left field line. It'll be tail up and fall for a base hit. He'll stop at third. And I was watching the left fielder, Jake Oligny. He kind of froze on it for just a second, Tommy, and it falls in front of him for a one-out single. Yeah. The runners was, on the corners, one out for Corey Russell. Yeah, it was fortunate, just short enough to be a base hit. Little John Denver playing in the background. Every time Corey comes up to play almost seven West Virginia, I almost tear up every time. <laughs> That's home. Go to first and back in diving safely. Paying attention to him first base is Brent Hare holding on the runner, Evan Carter. Runners on the corners, one out. Cyclone's got something going. What can Corey do here? Russell batting 294. And a pitch misses downstairs to number four. Corey Russell in the season. Five for 24, five for 17, rather. I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong column. Five for 17, no homers and five RBIs for Corey. But he's got a chance to drive one in 90 feet away. Another throw to first, paying a lot of attention to Evan Carter. On deck is Matthew Daly. Bottom of the first. Rembrandt brings a runner going. Ground ball, base hit left field. It's a one nothing ball game. Corey just hit it where it wasn't, right between the shortstop and third and the shallow left field. Plating Eggleston, Russell gets an RBI. He'll stop at first. Carter stops at second. It's a one nothing ball game. Tommy, nice piece of hitting. Just hit it where it ain't, Bubba. That's exactly right. Find a hole, get a run in, bring another good hitter up to, to the plate. RBI number six in the season now for Corey Russell. Here's Matthew Daly. We've got some speed on the bases. Hopefully we can get a gapper right here and make some more noise. 
Daly batting 250, no homers and two runs knocked in. One nothing Cyclones. Eggleston scores. The walk comes back to hurt the starting pitcher, Jack Bembry. Walks on hit batsman will kill you if you're a pitcher. Bembry to the belt, brings it, and it misses outside ball one to the right hand batting Matthew Daly. Daly on the season. Matthew 5 for 20 with a couple of doubles. Again, no homers and two runs knocked in. With men on base batting 350. There's a throw down to third, and that one gets into left field. It's a 2 0 ball game. Seahorn threw it down to the third baseman. It ricocheted off his glove to the third base, to the dugout side of the third base bag, and in the score will be and is Evan Carter. It's 2 0. It's a stolen base and an E2 on the throw. Third baseman never had a chance on that one, Tommy, and so it's a 2-0 ball game out the second trots Russell. So Seahorn threw it down to third base to the dugout side of the bag, skipped past the third baseman in the shallow left field, and easily coming on in to score run number two is Evan Carter. And foul to the backstop, one ball, two strikes. 37 degrees, you left Myrtle Beach Sunday morning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was warmer when I got home than it was at noon there. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so I had, a, I had long nine long holes and a cup of chili, and I came home. <laughs> Bembry, 1-2 offering. He'll bring it to Daly. Fly ball. Back and out of play, and the count as Russell broke to third. He'll have to go back. One ball, two strikes. 2 nothing Elizabeth, the bottom of the first. So our next broadcast coming up next week. We're loaded next week. Got Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday heading into race week. Happy Valley Monday and Tuesday. Then we'll be back in here for Jefferson County on Saturday night. Bringing it. Reaches out, shoots in the right field. Does it fall? Right fielder says, nope, he'll hold up. And Caleb Meredith has it hung up there for him, makes a catch, and there's two away. Here's Logan Estep. Estep was on third base when Wagner hit that sack fly to play him to win that game Friday down at Smoky Stadium. He step or step in batting 368. Got a triple, no homers, and six runs knocked in. Russell out at second. Two on, two out, and two in here. Bottom half of the first inning. So Jack Bembry, B E M B R Y, your pitcher, right hander. And down in the dirt. Ball one. Get blocked by catcher Hunter Seahorn. I got to figure that his daddy's Jay. Just have to think that. I was just thinking that myself. Yeah. Jay played at ETSU, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he did. He played, played at Science Hill back when I did the Hilltoppers a long time ago. Throw back to first, and tag applied to Corey. He stands in there safely. Eccleston a walk and a run scored. Wetzel, check swing, fielder's choice back to the box. Carter a single in the left field. Russell an RBI single to plate Eggleston, and Carter comes home in the throwing error. And Daly flies out the right. He stepped big, high, and fouls it back. One ball, one strike. Batter number six here in the first inning. Two-nothing ball game. Cyclones trying to go to five and two, and this conference race really getting tightened up with East knocking off Unicoi County yesterday. Memory brings it. East step takes it. Strike called. Logan East step. One ball, two strikes. And if you missed it, Sullivan East yesterday knocking off Unicoi County 11 to eight. South beat Happy Valley 12-2, and Central. Defeats Johnson County 11 to 6. There's a shot, and it's a foul ball backing out of play down the right field line. So the conference right now at the top, it's Central, Unicoi County, and East all 3 and 1. Happy Valley 1 and 1. Cyclones at 1 and 2. South at 1 and 4. And Johnson County currently in the cellar at 0 and 2. East step waits on his next offering. Here it comes, and it's a ground ball to the third baseman. Ranging to his left field, low throw, dug out by. The first baseman, nice job by Brent here, and that is your inning. Five to three on the put out. Two runs, one hit, one error, and one man left. We played one. It's Elizabeth and two, University High. Nothing. We'll keep it right here. And Tommy, tell me, my good friend, about some good things going on at Chick fil A, would you please? We're uh, selling some frosted lemonade, some frosted sunrise. Um, Talk about come, breakfast. Come get, yeah, come get breakfast. It's uh, spring break in Elizabeth, and so. Uh, that that school that school breakfast line is uh, a little slow this week. Uh, breakfast bowls, burritos, mm. 
Something about breakfast in a bowl. I've not had that. But breakfast in a bowl, you get some hash browns, some eggs, cheese, mm-hmm. and your choice of protein. I, I recommend the uh, the nuggets in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's delicious. Breakfast in a bowl. What would you chase it with? Coffee, a little OJ? Either one. Your favorites. Sweet tea, whatever you want. <laughs> chase a little sweet tea, a little coffee, a little OJ. So Trey Shown goes one, and now Carson Dillard now, your new pitcher for the Elizabeth and Cyclones in a non-conference game. We'll give you the numbers on Dillard coming up here in just a second. Two nothing as we go to the second. For University High, they'll send up Jake Oligny, Kayla Meredith, and Bryn Hare. So Dillard. Dillard making his second appearance of the season. He's pitched four innings of baseball. He's 1-0. and Giving up four hits, one run it was earned. He's walked two and struck out five. He has an ERA of 1.75, Carson Dillard. He'll go to work now. On the lead man, that would be the left fielder, Jake Oligny. 2 nothing Elizabeth and going to the second. <laughs> Hello, Patricia Parker watching. Thank you. Pitch inside ball one. So Carson Diller, the right-hander in relief of Trey Shown. Diller brings it. That's inside and tight. He's popping that leather of Evan Perkins, 2-0. So Shown goes an inning. And now Diller, this may be a staff game. Getting some work in. We've not played since Friday. Saturday's game, of course, rained out. And the varsity, based on the schedule I've got, won't play again until Friday. So this may be a get some arms, keep them limbered up. This one is upstairs, ball four on four. Tying run comes to plate here in the second inning, and right fielder Caleb Meredith for University High, the Junior Bucks. Campus, of course, on the campus of East Tennessee State. Vince Red and Sarah Presnell and Barry Walton, Chase Dixon, Lisa Lell, some of the folks watching the game. Snap a throw to first, back in diving safely. Johnson at first, Eggleston at second, Corey Russell at short, and Wagner down at third defensively. Perkins behind the plate. Carson Dillard brings it outside, and Carson coming out of the pin, struggling to find that strike zone right now. Trey Shown faced four batters in the first inning. Had a pretty easy time of it. There's a strike right down the heart of the play, an old gutter ball strike. One ball, one strike. So he can find his groove. Mm-hmm. That's what he's out there for. He's getting, getting some reps. Throw strikes and get some ground balls. Yep. This one outside, ball three, three and one. Caleb Meredith, the left-hand batting right fielder for University High. Throw back to first again, paying a lot of attention to Jake Oligny. He's back in safely. Outfield again is Carter in left, Wetzel in center, and Logan East step in right. There's our strike call. Two balls and two strikes now to the number two man in this inning, right fielder Caleb Meredith. Where's number six for the junior bucks? On deck would be Brent Hare. Carson Diller to the belt, brings it. Outside, throw down to second. He may have a chance, and Corey got him. Good job out at second. Two to six, caught stealing. That was Perkins putting it right on the numbers. Corey applied the tag. Two to six, and the foot out, and there's one away. Evan with a cannon down to second. It was a little bit high, but Corey took it on the fly, which is probably even better, Tommy, and applied it as he was going in. So perfectly played, caught stealing two to six. Their base runners eliminated. There's a bad handle foul down the left field line. Did he make the catch? Great catch. He did. Great what catch. What a job by Wagner. In foul ground across the chalked up ball, tilting away from him towards the dugout. He reached out and speared at Tommy Tippin and got a great play by Wagner to get him in foul ground. I'll tell you what, he, he went all out and then uh, caught it and slowed up before he hit the railing on the dugout. Awesome play by Wagner down at third, and so your batter's retired his air. And a pitch outside of the left-hand batting first baseman. Two great plays in a row. Absolutely. Oligny walks and Perkins guns him down to second with Corey taking the throw. This one, a bad handle foul to the back. Backstop. One ball, one strike. 
Meredith a liner and foul ground to Wagner. Made a great play. Great defense helps the pitcher out and gives him some confidence. Got that right. Throw some strikes and get this get this guy and go hit again. Yeah, just rare by and suck, you know your defense is going to pick you up. Diller from the windup. One ball, two strikes. A little nubber, and that's a foul ball. Hit the box first. Man, I like this up. He just tells you what's going on. I'd get you a Frosted Sunrise. You tell me who it was. This one inside. Did it nick him? It did. Dillard's breaking ball got away, and it hit him. Barely grazed him. He was dancing around, but he did get nicked, and he'll try it the first. Here's A.J. Zimmerle. Dillard and Hare played some summer ball together for about three years. So there was mono e mono there. And I think Dillard must have made, got mad at him or something. They know each other. They, right? We've known, they've known him a long time. Yep. Here's A.J. Zimmerle, the right-hand batting shortstop. Throw to first, and... Johnson takes the throw back in standing here. Yeah, we forget a lot of these guys played with each other all year long, travel teams and whatnot. This one fouled back. Junior varsity got a big win yesterday, did they not? They did. They played uh, the, the junior bucks and uh, got down 7-1 and just pecked away and got a couple runs here or there and, and uh, tied it in the uh, sixth and won at the seventh. Sacrifice fly to left field. Brought in the Carson Diller, he was on third, got on swinging third strike. Drop, catcher dropped it, he gets on first, still second, still third. Sack fly got him in. It's a swing and a miss. 0 2 pitch. And he just made contact, fouls the back, no balls and two strikes. Dillard on the season, four innings of pitching, has amassed five strikeouts. He's a pitch away from making number six here. Trey Shine got that 12th strikeout of the season for him to end the first inning on strikeout swing to Pembry, his counterpart. Diller brings it. Shot to center field. Does it fall? No Wetzel's way. There. Ryan Wetzel catches a sinking line drive, and that is the inning for University High. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. We'll keep it here. We'll go to the actual we'll take a break for one of our great sponsors, and we'll do that. We'll come right back after you hear this from good folks in Tri-Cities Health. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Tri-Cities Health at 2208 West Elk Avenue in Elizabeth and wants to help you develop a roadmap to get you healthy again. They offer individualized, state-of-the-art diagnostic testing and treatment plans to help you achieve optimal health. They can help you with anxiety, depression, asthma and allergies, back pain, cholesterol, fatigue, headaches and migraines, high blood pressure, poor sleep, Restless leg syndrome, thyroid problems, weight gain, and weight loss, fibromyalgia, and DOT physicals, just to name a few. They're a phone call away at 543-7000, 543-7000. Listening is the key to getting at the root cause of your health issues. And again, that will help you develop a roadmap to get you healthy again. For more information, call today. Tri-Cities Health in Elizabethan at 543-7000, a proud sponsor of Elizabethan Cyclone Baseball. Out of the second inning, here's Evan Perkins. Perkins, Wagner, and Johnson for the Cyclones, leading 2 0. First pitch, chop foul, third base side. Evan settles in. Right hand batting catcher, Perkins on the season. Evan's batting 385. Leads the club and walks with eight. Perkins, no homers and three runs knocked in, and has a double. This one, a little flare in the left field, falls for a leadoff single for Evan Perkins. He just dropped it in behind the shortstop. He went back to try to make a nice play, Tommy, but it falls in for base hit number three of the ball game for Elizabethan. Here's Lawson Wagner. We've got three hits in that same spot. Wagner again, no homers and three runs knocked in. We're looking for our first home run of the season. We've got 39 runs driven in his 18. Wagner had that sack fly to plate. He stepped to win the game down Friday at Pigeon Forge. I'll never forget that. Chris Wagner came in to pitch as well. He had a heck of a day down at Pigeon Forge at Smoky Stadium. Keep saying Pigeon Forge. There's a pop third base side. Nice play. Third baseman throws back to first, trying to double him up. Cannot, but a nice play charging in Jacob Hare, Tommy, to make that catch on the bump pop up from third base and nearly doubled off. Evan Perkins did not. Wagner's retired. Here's Nick Johnson. Nice play with the third baseman. Great play by the third baseman. Great hustle. 
So one out, pump, bop, hop, bunt, rather, the third baseman. Here's Johnson. Johnson batting 211 on the season. First pitch, foul back. Team batting average at 303 for Elizabethan. And as we told you earlier, the man that's got the hottest stick would be Wetzel, batting 591. Runner going downstairs and check swing strike two, but a stolen base recorded by Evan Perkins. Now, is that Perkins? Or you get a courtesy runner. You get a courtesy runner. Is that Colton? Yes, Colton Miller is a courtesy Colton runner Miller, out yep. second for Perkins. One out, one on. Johnson's got one in scoring position. Two nothing Cyclones, bottom of the second. The schedule seven. Beautiful day for baseball. Just almost the perfect weather. Not too hot, not too cool. No humidity yet. The gnats are out here, though. I've seen the black gnats or skeeters out here a little bit. Tis the season, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was snowing here, raining them. Saturday and Sunday, and now we got beautiful weather for this game today. Embry checks him out at second, brings it, and it's bounced up there off the bare hand of Seahorn. That's got to be a wild pitch. It's, he didn't have much chance to do much with that one. It's more self-defense than anything. It bounces up there and down to third. Comes Colton Miller with run number three. Top of the order on deck in Eggleston. Two nothing Cyclones. Bottom of the second. Donna Horner Francisco. We thank you for listening and watching. Emory bring, brings it, and it's a foul back by Nick Johnson, the number nine man of the lineup. So we got lots of baseball next week. Happy Valley, home and away, Monday and Tuesday. Emory Johnson misses upstairs. Good eye by Nick. Count levels of two and two. Johnson's working hard. See if he can make something happen here with a swing or a walk. Emory working from the stretch to the belt, brings a 2-2 pitch and strike three caught. He's gone. First strike out of the ball game for Jack Bembry. Johnson's retired and there's two out on a call third, top of the order, Eggleston. Eggleston walked and came around to score the first of those two runs back in the first inning, last inning. How's your bracket, by the way? Is it blown to smithereens? It was busted early. <laughs> no chance. No chance. Belt high fastball, strike call to Ethan Eggleston, the left hand batting second baseman. We're in the second. Cyclones up 2 0 here with a third run 90 feet away. I had former Colton Miller. I had Kentucky Duke in the in the finals, so they're I guess they're at home playing checkers. It's a prop to sunrise. That's it. Yep. Villanova and Kansas and Michigan and Loyola. Let's go Loyola. I'd love to see Wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be neat? That would be cool. The Cinderella story. That's it. There's a end of the bat foul to the backstop by Eggleston. Count holds at no balls and two strikes. Two outs in the inning. That continues. Wetzel's on deck. I know this sounds cheesy and syrupy, but Tommy, there's, I, I got a feeling about this team. They're when good. They went, when they went down and did that Friday, they were not the least bit panic I could tell on either of those guys' faces. There's a ground ball hit sharply to his counterpart at second base. Fields throws. They're out of the inning. Four to three in the put out. For the Cyclones in the second, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. We have played two, and we will go to the third inning with a score. Elizabethan leading it 2 nothing. You are listening to Elizabethan Cyclone Baseball. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, providing tax, accounting, and audit services in East Tennessee for over 50 years. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, the region's largest firm, and serves individuals, family businesses, health care, nonprofits, manufacturers, and many more industries. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall's Wealth Management, celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. BCS Wealth Management is a full-service financial firm, providing personal financial planning, investments, and group benefits. For more information, please call 423-282-4511. That's 282-4511 or on the web at bcscpa.com. That's bcscpa.com. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, proud sponsor of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball.
third inning, third different pitcher for Elizabeth. And again, Ethan Eggleston out on the mound now. First Shound and Dillard, and now Ethan Eggleston will get the baseball from Ryan Presnell. Four and a third innings of baseball. The record of 1-0. and Eggleston again has... Well, he has given up three hits, a run. It was earned. He's walked two and struck out two in four innings of baseball. So, obviously, we're seeing staff here this afternoon. And a non-conference game against University High, keeping these guys' arms limbered up and... Look ahead to what's coming up on Friday's schedule. 1230 Sevier County and 530 McMinn County at Sevier County on Friday. And on Saturday, Bradley County at 10 o'clock and Cumberland County at 3 o'clock. That one's being played at Gatlinburg Pittman. And then we come back and get ready for conference play next week. So Eggleston, first pitch bounced up there to Perkins. Carson Diller goes in at second. Russell is at short. Third is Wagner. Johnson at first. So Eggleston, your third pitcher of the ball game, facing the catcher, Seahorn. Swing. And a miss and a pitch down and away. One ball, one strike. So you're going, you fixing to go get in there, is what you said? You haven't eaten? I have not eaten. You've been working hard on that day. My wife made me work this afternoon. <laughs> That's a strike call. That's all right. It's our anniversary today, so. Is it really? Yeah. 19 years. Awesome. Way to go. Yeah. 19 years. That's a long time with somebody. It is a long time. <laughs> On your anniversary, you're stripping the deck. Yep. Here's a ground ball to Russell. Honey, recharging. The honeybee loose has to be Rose. done. Got him. Nice job. Corey may look easy on a slow ground ball bouncing across that grass infield. Six to three on the put out. Top of the order, here's Cass Blevins, who reached on the air by Eggleston, who was playing second at that point back in the first. 19 years, okay. Where did you take the now Mrs. Tipton on your first date? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, the funny thing was, uh, we woke up this morning and, and Facebook reminded both of us it was our anniversary. <laughs> 19 years. 19 years. Happy wife, happy life. That's it. Happy wife, happy life. One ball, one strike <laughs> to Eggleston. Brings it. 1-1 one, one pitch. And it's downstairs, 2-1. Two, two balls and a strike. Yeah, Doug Hartley just chimed in and said, 18 good ones for me and one for her. <laughs> <laughs> That's him. Eggleston downstairs on a pitch to the left-hand batter, Blevins. Three balls and a strike. 2-0 Elizabeth. We're in the top of the third here. It's staff today. You've got Shown, Dillard, and now Ethan Eggleston pitching. And it's upstairs, ball four. So Blevins will try it to first with a one-out walk. Here's Jacob Hare. Hare had a sinking line drive to Ryan Wetzel out in center field back in the first, who was angling towards the first base bag, coming at that angle to make the catch. University High looking for their first hit of the ball game here so far. 2-0, Elizabethan. Eggleston working from the stretch, brings it, comes over top, pops him up, foul ground. Perkins says, I got it, and he's like a rat after cheese all over that one. In behind the home plate, he was pounced on that one. Made that look easy. No. That's a tough that's not, play. That is a very tough play. He made it look easy. He did. Popped on foul ground. Here's Carter Pollock. Perkins makes the catch two away in the inning, and here is the University High second baseman. 19 years. Well, happy anniversary to you and Mrs. Tipton. Thank you. Runner going, swing and a miss, throw down to second. Perkins, nobody's there. Into center field, backing him up, Corey Russell. So he threw right where it's supposed to be, and it was right on the number, too, quite frankly, on the, on the bag. But neither infielder had gotten there in time to take the throw, and in with the stolen base is... Cass Blevins. Perkins will crank it up and get it up there in a hurry, won't it? He can snap that throw. He is quick. Eggleston brings it. Off-speed pitch misses inside. Time called. Perkins will go out and talk to his pitcher. One ball, one strike, two outs in the third. So how far have you gotten in your deck project? You got it stripped down? Or you just We've got it clean. Yep. Let it dry and uh, hopefully get some paint on it tomorrow. And the next day. And the next <laughs> It'll day. take a couple of days. 
before it rains. It'll one be my one strike. It'll rain before I get finished. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, two and one. You feel that? Feel pretty confident saying that. Yeah, the, the dark rain. cloud will just come over my house and be sun shining next door. <laughs> Is that the way that goes? Is that? Yeah, I understand. <clears throat> Two balls in the strike. Eggers will step off the rubber now. Look, the runner back into second base. Seahorn grounds out to Russell at short. Levens walks, still second. And Hare pops out in foul ground behind home plate. Devin Perkins, our catcher. Eggleston brings it. Comes over top with this one. He'll come three-quarter, come over the top. Three balls in a strike now to Carter Pollock. Tying run to the plate here in the top of the third. Two-nothing Cyclones. Eggleston to the bell. Now step back off that rubber and looking back into second. Corey had circled in behind him just in the event that Eggleston would wheel and throw one out there, but he did not. On deck is your pitcher, the cleanup batter, Jack Bembry. Eggleston brings it. Fly ball. Actually, a pop at second, Dillard. And out of the inning, pop up. And that will be the inning for the University High Junior Bucks. No runs, no hits. No errors, they leave a man. We go to the bottom of the third, moving right along here. We'll come back after this timeout with your score, Cyclones 2, University of High Nothing. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Our great sponsor at Sprint, giving you a chance to save at all Sprint stores across the Tri-Cities. When you go into any Sprint store and say you heard the Tom Taylor Sports Show or Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball, they'll give you 25% off or a fourth off any accessory in the store. That would include Urban Armor Gear cases, OtterBox cases, any screen protectors, tempered glass, 25% off, wireless charging stands, pop sockets, tablet cases, wireless chargers, battery packs are all 25% off when you say you heard the Tom Taylor Sports Show or Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Also, Beats headphones, both the headphones and the earbuds, 25% off when you say you heard the show. Also, three-piece magnetic organizers, battery packs, tablet cases, JBL portable flip speakers. It goes on and on. Anything accessory in the store at any Sprint store in the Tri-Cities, say you heard the Tom Davis Sports Show and or Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball and save 25% off today at your Sprint store across the Tri-Cities. Here's Ryan Wetzel to get it started. He was a fielder's choice, one to three, tap back the box back in the first inning, but got a runner down to second. Ultimately helped him get around the score, and it's a strike call to Wetzel. Wetzel batting 591 coming in, 0 and 2 now. Bembry, the right hander, gets Wetzel, the right hander. Bottom of the third, 2 0 Elizabethan. She misses downstairs, and one ball, two strikes. And thank you wherever you may be listening and watching today. Like us and chairs, we'd appreciate that. Pitching, ground ball, shortstop to his right, fields, throws, and Wetzel's on, infield base hit. Took your shortstop, similarly fielded, but took him a while to crank it up and get it over there, Tommy, and Wetzel can scoot, infield base hit. Runner on for the Cyclones, base hit number, what, three of the ball game now for Elizabeth. I tell you, we got a lot of speed on this team. Yes, we do. It's actually base hit number four. Here's Carter got the first base into the ball game back in the first inning. Bembry now working from the stretch. Runner holds him on. And a belt high fastball strike call to Evan Carter. Corey Russell on deck here. Bottom of the third. Lead man on with an infield base hit by Wetzel. Pitching. Taking. One and one. Actually strike two call, that popped the leather. So Carter in a hold 0-2 now. On deck is Corey Russell. We're in the bottom half of the third. Embry brings it, and it's down and away. Anytime Carter's up there, it's going to get, he's going to get an extra challenge. People have read, they know this kid's already signed to play at Duke, or verbally committed to play at Duke, rather. He's only a sophomore, so... This one downstairs and misses. 
two and two, stolen base, uncontested by Wetzel. So, it's kind of like we were talking the other day, some folks that faced Daniel Norris, they can remember the day, and so, and this kid's up there, no, he's already signed a Division One verbal commitment. There's a bat and a pop, you want to get a little extra to get him out. Fly ball to left field, and it will be pulled down, the runner bluffs the tag, and Carter stays at, or rather Wetzel stays at second, Carter's retired, fly ball to left field. One out, one on for Corey Russell, RBI single, his sixth ribby of the season back in the first inning. The plate, Ethan Eggleston. There it is again, Tommy. <laughs> <Can't really talk. laughs> That's home, baby. Those roots. I well, need some crackers over here with this cheese we got going on. <laughs> <laughs> Ball upstairs, ball one. Pitcher one settled out, in nice. On. He has mm-hmm. settled in nicely mm-hmm. after the first inning. Yeah, Embry's pitching a nice ball game here after that two inning first inning. Corey misses outside, two and zero. Oh. Mm-hmm. Inside, upstairs. Inside. Two ball, no strike count. Embry. 3 0. He's been up inside, up outside now. Low on the inside part of the plate to the right hand batting Russell. 3 0. Daily on deck. So Embry working from the stretch. He'll bring it. 3 0. Strike caught. No, ball four on four. That looked pretty good from here, but we'll take it. Ball four. Second and first, one out. Here's Matthew Daly, the DH this afternoon. Flied out the right field to end, I shouldn't say end, but to be out number two of the first inning. So what Daly can do here. Matthew, in on base, batting 350. Sun's popped back out here. Sneaked out behind the clouds here on a Tuesday evening. And a strike call. Nice pitch. Got the outside corner. Embry's got a little pop on that. That leather's popping. Hello, Kathy Arnold watching and Thomas Dillard's watching. Thank you. Brings it. And it's strike two call down around the knees. And it's snowballs and two strikes to Matthew Daly. On deck is East step again. One out, two men on. Wetzel at second with speed, and Corey at first with speed. Bounced up there. Gets past the catcher. Rounding third, Wetzel. He's coming in, and he will score standing up. Nope, finally slides just to be sure. It's 3 nothing, and down comes Corey. To third base and stopping there. So all the way from second, Wetzel scores. That's a wild pitch. There's no – bounced up in front of the plate. Tommy, he didn't have a chance. I tell you what, he went back to get it, and I, th- I don't think he uh, thought Wetzel was coming all the way no, home. He didn't understand the speed Wetzel's got. You're exactly right. Corey comes down to third. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's a fly ball in the right field. Going back, going back, and he will reach up, make the catch. Runner tag, sack fly RBI, and it's a 4 nothing ball game. Nice piece of hitting by Daly. Hit it out in right field. Did his Side job. Play. Did his job. Did his job. You're exactly right. Corey Plates comes in from third. RBI for Daly. That would be Ribby on the season for Matthew Daly, number three. Here's Logan Estep. Rounded out to third in the first inning. There's a high pop. Falls in behind the shortstop into shallow left field for a two out single. The hit parade continues now. Two more this inning for the Elizabeth and Cyclones. Infield hit by Wetzel. Now the bloop single by step with two out into shallow left field. Here's Perkins singled his first time up. Throw to first. Back in diving safely. Tommy, you mentioned this every time we do a game, but this team was blessed with a lot of speed this year for Elizabeth. They are. And 
that's how you win ball games. If you can get on base, a wild pitch here or there, move runners, some sack flies, some bunts, put some runs on the board. Five base hits in the ball game now. Four runs and five hits for Elizabeth. The runner going, pitch down inside. C1 throws to second, not a chance. He got that one off the pitcher and in the second with a stolen base is Logan Eastep. So Perkins got one in scoring position out at second base with two out and two in here in the inning. Evan Perkins twirls that bat, brings it, and it's outside. Nice job of Seahorn to flag that one down, the catcher. Two runs on two base hits this inning, four all told now for the Cyclones. Bembry brings it, and it's a strike called. So Jack Bembry, your starter. Sun's popped out here again, kicking the flag, old glory blowing from left to right out in straightaway center field. There's a chopper, could be a tough play. Charging second baseman, he'll throw at the last second to Aaron, got him. Threw it pretty hard, but <laughs> much spacing on that one. He about took the first baseman's head off, but he makes the play. Four to three in the put out. Inning done now for the Cyclones in the third. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and for the Cyclones, we leave one. We played three. Elizabeth and Leeds, four nothing. We'll be right back after this. Brought to you by the good folks from your title sponsor of the broadcast, the great folks from Chick fil A. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. In entertainment news, this year it's all about the mini series. In pop culture news, mini everything. Because, aww. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Minis until 10.30 a.m. This is Andrew McKeon, president of Carter County Bank. Carter County is blessed with amazing characteristics. Natural beauty, caring people, and locally owned small businesses all make our community one of the best places in America to live. Remember to support Carter County small businesses with your purchases, because for every $100 you spend at a Carter County owned business, $45 stays here to create local jobs and support our schools. When you spend $100 at a national chain store, only $14 remains in our community. So no matter where you roam, hurry back home. Let's pull together to support local business and make our community even better. Carter County Bank is big on small business, locally owned and managed to support our we go to the fourth inning. It's all Elizabeth and four nothing. Eggleston's second inning of work. He'll go to work on Bembry, and he fouls him back. Four, five, and six. The numbers through three. Elizabeth and four runs and five base hits. They've left three. And for University High, no runs and no hits. And they've stranded three. Bembry, Oligny, and Meredith. Four, five, and six here in the fourth. Oh, a nice pitch by Eggleston. Big breaking ball, Doug Harley. That one in. For a call strike, no balls and two strikes. That one's cut across the plate big time. Bembry, pitcher versus pitcher. Ethan gets him the foul back. How you doing, big dog? I'm doing excellent. How are you, Tom? I'm doing great, man. Loving it. These guys are fortunate. They've already uh, went through, not through, but they've used three different pitchers, and each one of them has done their job this far. They must be pretty deep in the bullpen, huh? Yep. Sean Diller, now Ethan Eggleston getting some... Arms getting some work. We got rained out, of course, on Saturday down at Jeff County. Or down at Smoky Stadium in East Jeff County, I should say. One and two now to your lead man, Bimber. Eggleston brings it. Swing and a foul tip. Gets past Perkins down to first. Can he get him? And he cannot. He'll be on. Strikeout credited to Eggleston. I've heard that's a over the years, pass ball or E2? How do you score that one? You know what? I don't know. Went to, went to I, the Wickers. Probably. I've you say E2? Hmm? E2? Usually that's what it is. But I've also seen him in the years past and just charge a pass ball to the catcher. But I think now they've changed it. The ruling is a strikeout with an error to the catcher. Here's Oligny. Throw to first, back in. Strikeout still goes in the books, right? Yep. Cake still goes for Eggleston. Just don't go on the board. Didn't go on the board. You got a runner at first. 
Four nothing Elizabeth in top of the fourth. Beautiful day for baseball. Easton brings it. Bunts out in front of the plate. Eggleston charges third base side of the mound. Throws. Nice job, Johnson covering. Runner down to second. They do their job. And the old sacrifice bunt one to three. Great job. But it's two great, three great plays defensively here this afternoon. Foul in behind home plate. Perkins, a big towering pop, got that. And that bunt, third base side, they work on that a lot. That's not easy to do, come off the mound and feel that. No, no, they, uh, you know, that ball's that backspin on it whenever it's mm -hmm. coming back down at you. A lot of people don't realize it when the hind catcher, you know, don't make that play. They don't realize how hard it is to track that ball. Exactly right. There's a line shot to center field. That will fall for a base hit. Rounding third, he'll get the green light. Here comes, nope, Watson won't throw it. He'll just get it back in, and that's a four to one ball game. So the error on that strike three comes back to haunt him. It's a four to one ball game. So Caleb Meredith credited for an RBI, a little bloop single in the right field. Plates the runner all the way around from second. It's a four to one ball game, and here is Brent Air. who got hit his first time up. Swing and a miss, throw down to second, and Perkins wanted to throw it and drop the ball, and there's a stolen base. So a stolen base registered for Meredith down to second with an RBI also in his hat bat on that little single. First hit of the ball game for University High. It's a 4-1 game, and here's Brent Air. Hello to Thomas Dillard. We appreciate you listening to the broadcast. Who's the big guy we saw, I met the other day that plays golf with you? He got a boy on the JV team. Said he listens. We met him downstairs. We were leaving. He said, you want to go play golf? Big old boy. He got a boy on the JV here. Anyway, he said he listens all the time. Um, Livingston, maybe? Yeah, that's who it was. I was trying to think. It's been a day or two. Here's a ground ball to yeah, Wagner was third. Like... You're looking back to second. Throw to first. Got him. And then the runner waits, kind of delays, and comes on down to third. Nice play by Wagner. Looking into the sun. Down to third to field at five to three to Johnson. Across the diamond. Two away. Runner comes down to third. Here's A.J. Simmerly. Flight out to Wetzel and center at the end of the second inning. So they call him out on first or did they? He yeah, was out. Mm -hmm. It's a close play. First a little bang banger and they got him. Five to three on the foot out. Wagner charging, looking into the sun. Made a great play down the third and got him by half a step at first on the throw to Nick Johnson. Two away here, similarly. Number eight man of the lineup. Eggleston brings it. Fly ball into the gap and left center field. That will fall for a base hit. Wetzel cuts it off. Run comes in at four to two. And similarly gets an RBI with two out. So we go to Hunter Seahorn, the University High catcher. It's, they've cut it in half now. It's a 4-2 ball game. So Meredith has scored. Bembry has scored. And now here is, similar with an RBI single, here's Hunter Seahorn who grounded out to Corey Russell at shortstop to lead off the last inning. First pitch, shot foul. Third base side. Two runs on two hits so far this inning for the Junior Bucks. It's a 4-2 ball game here in the top of the fourth. Hello, Debbie Hodges and Betty Perry. Thank you, ladies, for listening to the broadcast. Myself and Pastor Doug. This one downstairs, throw to second. Perkins are waiting on him. Safe. Oh, baby. Must have slid to the outfield side of the bag. Evan Perkins put that right on the number. And And so Coach Presnell says, time out, let's come in here and talk about this thing. Perkins laid that one right on the second base bag. That was a perfect throw. He must have slid it out to the side of the bag because he was, I thought he was a dead duck. But umpire said no way. And a stolen base credited A.J. Simmerly down at second base. Two runs, two hits this inning. It's a 4-2 ball game with two out. We're in the top of the fourth. We're joined by our buddy, Pastor Doug. We'll put him on the camera here in a half inning. And we also got Carter Evers going to talk to us here in a few minutes too. The quarterback. The Elizabeth and Cyclones. So, big, big senior year coming up. Yeah. Big senior year coming. Had an awesome junior year. And uh, we're excited to see what he's got in him for his senior year. Mm-hmm. 
think he's got a gas in the tank for senior year? I think he's got a little gas left. I believe he's got a little gas left. I think he does. He's going to put on the show next he's year. He's surrounded by a lot of good hands out there. You know, he's got a bunch of guys moving up that's going to be able to be some pretty good targets for him. Can't wait. Here's a hard hit ball. It'll hang up for wet, so it sounded worse than it was. And Ryan reaches up, makes a catch, and that's the inning. For the University High Junior Bucks, two runs, two hits, no errors. They leave one. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We're going to keep it right here. Carter Everett's the music man, too. He's back here playing a little Michael Jackson. You want to rock with me. So there he is on the screen, our buddy, Pastor Doug. Look at you, big dog. I like it. Is that me, buddy? That's you. Tell me about what's going on Sunday at the church house. And Sunday, I man, what a, what a great time. I, you know, woke up this morning just thinking about it and praying about it. And, then, uh, you know, we're going to have a resurrection service at 7 a.m. A lot of people call it a sunrise, but, you know, we've kind of just called it a resurrection service. So we're going to have a good time in uh coming out and celebrating and having a few people want to want to give us some testimony about what uh, a risen savior means to them and also uh, going to have communion to go along with it starting 7 a.m. I'm going to do it a little bit different this year Tom I'm, I'm excited uh, you know after we have some testimony and some word and we're going to break off and uh, got a wonderful godly woman from the church Miss Eva Heatherly which is uh, she does just such a wonderful job with, with the ladies she's over uh, the women's class, women's studies, and uh, she's just uh, super, super knowledgeable and just wonderful, wonderful asset to the church. But she's going to be leading those ladies in communion, and then we're going to have the men on the other side coming together in a little fellowship in communion. So we're going to do something a little different, get the ladies a little bit more tight-knit and, and celebrating as, as the men do it. Time's to start? 7 a.m., 7 a.m., and uh, then we got a cantata, is that correct? We've we've got a cantata. Well, we've got 7 a.m. Then the guys are going to be some of the other guys are going to be doing breakfast. Breakfast will be ready by 7:30, so we'll have breakfast then. Take a breather and come back. And um, uh, you know, Neil's worked really hard with his choir. Choir being so faithful and getting ready for the cantata and work work excited. Amen. Amen. Here's Wagner foul back. One ball, one strike. We're in the fourth inning. Wagner, Johnson, the top of the order. Eggleston, so the lead cut in half. 4-2 ball game. Elizabeth leaves the Leeds University High Junior Bucks here. Bottom half of the fourth of a scheduled seven. Again, it's been staffed so far. Trey Shawn pitched an inning. Carson Diller pitched an inning. And Ethan Eggleston's gone too. Bembry brings it. And I guess upstairs good eye by Wagner. I got to get up. I got to get up a little more upright in my seat here, Tom. I noticed Betty Perry's got online here, and she's a major Duke fan, so. There you go. I know, I know. She wants to see that right now. She likes the Dukies. Oh no, she don't like Duke, but she knows I do. <laughs> I know she didn't do. I've heard her. She's come in on the show before. I know it. I Anybody know it. but Duke, she says. Yep, that's right. You'll probably see her comment here in a minute. Wagner popped down the button, foul ground to the third baseman. Here's a ground ball right back to Bembry. Nice job of the pitcher. University High speared that one, come right back up the middle, and one to three in the put out. Wagner's gone. One away in the fourth inning for Elizabeth, and here's Johnson struck out back in the second inning. In the Cyclones, four runs on five hits, and University High right now, two runs on two base hits. So Debbie, Debbie Hyder Hodges, here's a slow ground ball to the first baseman. He'll wave off his pitcher and beat him to the bag. About two steps, there's two down. Easy inning so far for Bembry. And so here's the top of the order, Ethan Eggleston. Eggleston a walk, a run scored, and a ground out to second in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. This kid's always been phenomenal every time he gets up to bat. You know, he's not a, a big hitter, but it seems like he always finds a way. Mm -hmm. Come through a lot last year, you know, in, in the big – Big crucial moment. Seemed like he generated a hit of some kind. There's a fastball strike called one and one. Two out in the inning. Top of the order. Eggleston Wetzel's on deck and Carter. If we can keep him rolling here. Four two Cyclones in the fourth. And a curveball that catches outside corner. You can see it breaking from here. One and two. Bembry wasting no time. He's right back up there and ready to roll here. Got that mo going. A little momentum. Try and get out of the inning and go to the fifth and see what can happen here. Pitching, and it's outside Ethan Eggleston. Good eye. One ball, two strikes. Elizabeth in four and two. A lot of 
Good eye, Basin. Full count. A lot of baseball coming up in the conference. We got a home and away with Unicoi County, home and away with Sullivan South, home and away with Johnson County. We're going to bring them all to you. And a makeup game up at East. Here's our ground ball. Hit the second base on two hops. Filled up out high, inning over. One, two, three for the Cyclones. Nice job up Embry. And we'll keep it right here and talk a little bit more. We'll get Carter in here in a few minutes. So, so Doug, again, tell us, uh, I know one of your goals in Hunter Memorial Baptist is to outreach into the community here in Carter County. There's a lot of need out there. And uh, by, by virtue of looking across the sanctuary, you got more and more folks coming all the time, and it's been packed in there, hasn't it? We, we've just been blessed so much over the last, especially, you know, year here. Uh, a lot of great new people. God's adding like pieces, you know, to, to a puzzle. Uh, with every new member, it seems like uh, they're finding their place in, in the different ministries that's available. Uh, I think we have like 14 ladies now, Tom, in the WMU. You know, we, we've struggled for years to, to create a WMU a women missions team that, uh, you know, it just, uh, I don't know what happened. It was just almost like it was something that was missing but all of a sudden you know martha buck uh, prayed about that position took it over and and they're just doing phenomenal things you know with outreach through wmu and uh, uh you know working with the guys down rsm and uh just so many different things to get involved with if you're not involved in something it's your own fault because there's god god's got so many doors opening up right now and uh, just if you if you seek him don't just come to be a pew setter that's it. You know, if you come to be a pew setter, then that's that's pretty much all you're going to be. But if you come to, you know, seeking the Holy Spirit to, to say, okay, where where's my place in this? You know, the ultimate picture. Me and you, me and you, on the same page with it. You know, we won't see people added to God's kingdom daily, daily. Absolutely. So uh, time's running out, bro. Can't do it sitting on a pew, can you? No, got to walk your sleeves and get after it. Fourth right. pitcher of the day used by Elizabeth and Nick Johnson on the hill now. The big right hander going over, coming over first base. We'll see who your first baseman is here in just a second. So here we go. This will get it started. And it's the top of the order. Cast play with strike call. This is Nick Johnson on the hill for Elizabeth and Nick making his second appearance of the season. No decision. Here's a chopper foul by Blevins. Blevins, a walk reached on an Eggleston error back in the first inning. Four to two, we go to the fifth inning here of a scheduled seven. JV game to follow. We won't broadcast that one, but we may sit and watch it for a few minutes. But, man, what a beautiful day. Goodness. Blessed. Oh, Blessed. Man, oh, my. Love living here. Downstairs misses. Had several opportunities over the years to move away. I did once, came back, and I thought, you know what? Old Cowboys going to hang right here. No place like home, huh? No. no. I love West Virginia's where I'm from, but kinfolk are all gone, so this is home now for me. From all intents and purposes, foul ball, first base side. I will say I'm a little upset with Chris Payne. I want to bring him up here a little bit. I went down there Friday to the ball game Smoky Stadium. I was asking for a <laughs> chop house gift card. <laughs> <laughs> and his little shoe box, his glove box, and didn't get one. There's a line shot into right field. That will be a base hit. Lead off single for Cass Blevins. Base hit number three of the ball game for University High. Tying run to the plate is Jacob Hare. Flat out to center, popped out in foul ground behind on plate to Evan Perkins. So in that little shoe box he has in his glove box in his truck, there's ample amount of gift cards, and I did not. Just couldn't get one. I said, I was nice to him. He's like, I knew it was his birthday coming up. I said, hey, dog, you got any of them cards? He simply wants to fresh out. Hit him. <laughs> Hit him from you. Yes, are they out of from me? You know, I took the rascal out last night for his for his 45th birthday, which was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took him out last night. Me and my wife took him and Pam out. And they, uh, you know, we give him a hard time, but, you know, he, he Works all day long, pretty tough job over there at Eastman, you know, with Rex Hill, and then comes in there as Sunday school director. He does a great job, don't he? He does a good job. I'm giving him a hard time. That was a tapper back at the box, sack bunt one to three, moving Blevins down to second. Runner retired at first. Wagner now playing first for Elizabethan. Carson Diller down to third. Corey stays at second. Eggleston back at first or second defensively. 
There's Pollock down on the way, ball one. So again, the defense, Carson Dillard at third, Corey Russell at short, Ethan Eggleston at second, and at first is Lawson Wagner. And behind the plate would be, of course, Evan Perkins, as we said, Carter in left, center Wetzel right, East step, Johnson on the mound. Fly ball. Back in left field, pretty well tagged, going back. That'll be over the head of Carter. Throw up against the wall. One run scores and stopping at second. And it's a big run-producing RBI double for Carter Pollock over the head of Carter. Bounced up against the wall in deep left field. And all of a sudden, it's a different ball game. Went from 4-0 in the tie run out at second. Go ahead, run at first, with, or at the play with only one out for Jack Bembry. So nice piece of hitting with Pollock. He didn't hit that one over the head of Evan Carter. You can scoot. He drilled that one deep. Very, very well would have been out in a lot of regular high school fields because I think that hit the front edge of the warning track. So it's a pretty good shot to hit the warning track here at O'Brien Stadium. Mm -hmm. He's got some distance out there. Oh, yeah. The gap in left center is about three, 358 on the wall out there. Yeah. See, so one hopped it up against the wall. Here's Bembry upstairs. 2-0, Bembry, a strikeout to Shown to end the first inning. Strikeout swing, he reached on a, he's the one that struck out. Error on the fielding play by Perkins and came around to score, and all of a sudden it's a 4-3 baseball game and the tying running out at second base. Nick Johnson checks him and brings it. Swing and a miss, ran it in on a nice pitch by Johnson. Two balls and a strike. On deck is Oligny. We're in the top of the fifth, and it's suddenly a different ball game. Went from 4 nothing to 4-3, and the tying run out at second. Four base hits now in the ball game for University High. Brings it. Swing and a miss. Foul tip, actually. Did he eat a lot last night? Oh, I, I blew it last night, Tom. Uh, my wife's got me on this new Lose It app. I'm not allowed to have about 1,800 calories a day. Oh, really? Yeah, that one meal last night was Swing and a miss. Strikeout swing. I think, Two down. I think that one meal last night was about 1,200 by itself, so I was over about 300 this morning. <laughs> Did Chris eat good? Oh, yeah. He, but, yeah, he, I tell you what, he was disciplined. He was disciplined. He didn't have any bread or, or any of that stuff, so he done pretty good. Here's Oligny, two out of the inning. Hello to Brian Jenkins now watching and also Jennifer Johnson. That would be Carter's mama. She picked the perfect time to come on to watch because we're going to have her son on talking here in a minute. The big dog, Carter Everett. Single Blevins. RBI double by Pollock. Tying run out at second. Johnson brings it. Strike call. Took an off-speed pitch. Nice pitch by Johnson. Caught the outside corner one and one. To Jake Oligny, the left fielder for University of Iowa. Walk and a sacrifice bunt. He's officially in the book over. Fourth pitcher of the day used by Ryan Bresnell, and the bullpen's warming up again. This misses outside. You've had Trey Shown, Carson Dillard, Ethan Eggleston, and now Nick Johnson on the hill. Trying to see who that is down there. Who's the right-hander down there, Tommy? Here's a pop-up out in shallow left field. Carter says, I've got it. He'll squeeze that old cow hide, and Inning is over. University High, again, another nice inning for the Junior Bucks. Two runs, two hits, no errors. They leave one. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's a 4-3 ball game in favor of the Elizabethan Cyclones. You want to get him in here? Big Carter, come on down here. He's looking. He's like, when, when do I get to talk? So come on in here. The big man's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him strolling down through here. Yeah. <laughs> He's had his taters. How you doing, dog? Good. How are you, sir? Good. Carter Moose Everett. Don't let him talk too much, says Brian Jenkins. There you go. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Yeah, doing a great job on the PA. Who's, who's the other man down there doing the PA? Uh, Big Nick. Big Nick? Yes, Nick sir. Miller? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, he's doing a great job. He's so, awesome. uh, I don't want I don't want him to see your knee, but you had uh, knee surgery yes, and that scar. and So, how's everything going for you? Uh, it's going great. I got about a month and a half left to rehab. Uh, just trying to get ready for summer camps this year and get ready for spring practice. So tell me about your season last year through your eyes. What do you think about 2017 Cyclone football? How'd it go for you? I thought it was in a, a pretty good season. I mean, it didn't finish how we wanted to. I mean, had a, had a couple big losses, but, I mean, 
uh, I mean, I think we're ready for this year. I think last season was really good for us. I mean, a lot of us stepped up. I mean, like, big Nick Miller down there played center for a lot. I mean, first time starting against Science Hill as a junior. I mean, that's, that's tough. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I experienced it as a sophomore. I mean, it's one of the toughest things to do. But I, mean, I thought it was a good season for us. Set tight here. Don't leave me. Here's Ryan Wetzel leading things off. Swing and a miss and a pitch down on the way to get it started. Wetzel tabber back to the box. Infield hit. Came around the score to run. It's 4-3. Cyclones in the bottom of the fifth. We're talking, you see, Moose. Is that He called you Moose? Yes, How'd you get that nickname? Because I'm slow. Because what? Because I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Here's a line shot into right field. That will be a base hit for Wetzel. Nice job. Ryan hit him where the eight. Second base hit of the ball game for Wetzel. Base hit number six for Elizabeth. And here is Evan Carter. They're looking at Ben Burke for the third time here. Let's see what they can. They figured him out. He's pitched a very nice ball game. The starter for University Eyes. Pretty much held the Cyclones in check for all intents and purposes. So, so you've been throwing so far? I mean, you guys lift weights. What do you do right now? Uh, we're lifting weights and doing some agilities. I've been throwing a lot with, uh, with Corey and Evan. And uh, Zach Hartley just trying to get some time went down with, uh, and also with Coach Witt and Ryan at Witt Huddle doing that a lot. It's a fly ball to left field going back as he get to it, and he does not. He gets away from the left fielder coming down to third wet, so he'll stop right there. So a big double for Evan Carter. So back-to-back -back base hits. Carter stands at second, Wetzel down to third. Nobody out, and here's Corey Russell. This may be the inning the Cyclones need to blow this thing open. It's a 4-3 ball game. They had them 4-0 in University of Iowa. Good baseball team, 6-3 and three of scrap back to make it a one-run game. Why do you guys play almost having West Virginia and Corey Bats? That was, that was a choice of songs. There you go. Almost having West Virginia, Corey. Pitch inside, ball one to Corey. He with an RBI single back in the first. RBI number six of the season, walked and scored a run in the third. Benberg working from the windup with three runners at second and third, misses downstairs. He's still got some pop in his arm. Even though we're into the fifth inning, he's thrown a lot of pitches. Benberg's popping the leather of his catcher, Hunter Seahorn. Benberg brings it. Foul back, big cut by Corey. Is Corey fired up for the football season? Oh, for sure, yes, sir. We can't wait. Can't wait either. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Love hanging on the sidelines, you guys. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's a blast down there. Oh, it is. It's, 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 Coach it is. Carter. And yeah, Coach, Coach Witten's a trip. Yes, he is. Love that guy. For sure. As a fly ball, center field as a center fielder makes the catch. Runner tags. Here he comes in. Sack fly RBI. Corey Russell did his job. Nice job. Had to wait and see. The center fielder, Kaz Blevins, made that catch. Wetzel tags. Russell does his job on the sack fly RBI. His second RBI of the ball game, number seven of the season now for Corey. One away. Wetzel scores. Carter tags, comes down to third, and here's Matthew Daly. He had a sack fly RBI back in the third inning to plate a cyclone. Makes it five to three. So are you throwing now or yes, just sir. lifting weights? I'm, I'm doing both. Yes, sir. So how many how many reps you get a day? Throwing? Mm -hmm. I try to get a little over 100 throws a day with my dad, at least. 100 throws a day. Swing and a miss. Foul tip, actually, daily. It's 0 and 2. Carter dancing around down a third. One out, one on, one in here in the fifth inning. Cyclones get a run back to lead a 5 to 3 now for University High. And he jammed him in a foul ball. Hit his leg first and ricocheted off his leg out to the pitcher. So it's no balls and two strikes. A hundred throws a day. Try to, yes, sir. You've been thrown to who? Some of the guys been uh, playing catch with you? Uh, Corey, uh, Evan Perkins, Zach Hartley, Parker Hughes. Just trying to get some time down with them. Mm-hmm. No balls, two strikes. See if Daly can drive one in here. Ground ball. Shortstop in comes the run. Shortstop plays to first. Run scores. Job done. Daly at six to three, two away. Nice job. Carter comes in, plates that second run of the inning. It makes it a six to three ball game. Two away, and here is Logan Eastep. Single and a ground out to third. Boy, Nick's getting into this. I like it. He's got he's hitting those. I like it. Yeah, hey, Nick's, Nick's got he's it doing all. Doing a good job down there. Nick's got it all. 
I like it. I'm looking forward to every game now. He says, let, after the national anthem, what's he say? Let's play ball. Let's play ball. <laughs> I like it. You can't that base. Swing and a miss. Logan East step. Two out, two in here in the inning. Base is empty. Don't let him talk too much, says Coach Jenkins. There you go. Popped him up. Bad handle foul. Back and out of play. So Elizabeth and puts two more back on the board. That's a sign of a good baseball team. When they score some, you come back and score some of your own, and we have. We put two up here. Another bad handle pop, another same result, backing out of play. Nope, the catcher says he popped it up and got it. I was looking away, my bad. Seahorn makes the catch and foul ground. That's the inning. And so, again, wrapping us up here, you are excited about 2018 oh, sure. Cyclone football. For sure, yes, sir. It's going to be a big season. What do you think our strength is going to be? Uh, hopefully passing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes, sir. Hopefully passing the ball. You're a, you're a neat guy. I don't know how many records. I have to go back. We were trying to figure it out on the sideline that last game, how many records you broke this year passing I, I this past year. I can't tell you how many yards I had this year, honestly. No. no you just go out there and throw them. Yes, sir. Do what Coach Witten says. <laughs> That's go. the goal. That is the goal. Keep Coach Witten happy, right? Yes, sir. That's it. Yes, sir. Carter Everett, you the man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes, say hello to, look up here and say hello to your mama. Look up, up here. Right. Hey, Mom. Hey, I love Mom. you. Yeah. Anybody else you want to say hello to? Hey, Coach Jenkins. Coach Jenkins. I don't what? love you. <laughs> okay, that'd be a good time to stop. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. There you go. My man Carter Everett in here. We'll take a break. We'll be right back from Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall on Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, providing tax, accounting, and audit services in East Tennessee for over 50 years. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, the region's largest firm, and serves individuals, family businesses, health care, nonprofits, manufacturers, and many more industries. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall's Wealth Management, celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. BCS Wealth Management is a full-service financial firm providing personal financial planning, investments, and group benefits. For more information, please call 423-282-4511. That's 282-4511 or on the web at bcscpa.com. That's bcscpa.com. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, proud sponsor of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Evan Carter now on the mound for the Elizabeth and Cyclones. Pitcher number five here the evening. Shawn Dillard, Eggleston, Johnson, now Carter, the man they're working against here in the sixth inning. That would be left-hand batting Caleb Meredith, the right fielder, a line out to Wagner who crossed this chalk down the third baseline, caught that great sizzler in foul ground, and then had an RBI single to run, scored back in the fourth. He's one for two. Carter, and it's... Ball four, four. Meredith. Trots to first. So Evan Carter now on the mound. Here's Brent Hare. Carter in three and a third. He's 0 and 1 of the season. Seven hits, six runs. They're all earned. He walked two and struck out four. So. Evan, see if he can help the cause a little bit. ZRA's up there a smidgen. Hello, Jerry Keller. Jennifer Johnson told Carter to behave. <laughs> Mama's watching in Memphis. Memphis, baby. You ever been to Graceland, Tommy? I have not. Yep. But I've had a fried peanut butter and nanner sandwich. You what? I've had a fried peanut butter and nanner sandwich. Meredith on it first. Lead off walk here in the fifth inning. Evan Carter on the hill. Brings it. Strike call, nice pitch. University I, four runs on four hits. It's all happened in the last two innings. Peanut butter and banana sandwich. Evan Carter brings it, foul back. Are you a fan, were you a fan of Elvis? You like Elvis? I kind of remember him a little bit. I, I was born in 73, so I listened to him a little bit. I remember as a kid, my aunts and uncles watching him. Mm -hmm. I think I remember watching his last concert on television. 
There you go. That was the the end of the uh, the rough times, I think, for him. He, he struggled, no question. One ball, two strikes. Evan Carter, runner to first. We're in the sixth inning. This is Brent Hare. Evan brings it. And he fouls the back and out of play and a bad handle foul. Bullpen warming up again for Elizabeth. Who'd you say was it, Nico? I think it was. Yep, you're right. Nico actually is in left field now. Carter's in on the hill. A line shot to right field. Does it stay up? It does. Falls in front of East step They'll get it back in real quick. And so Wagner at third. Shortstop Russell second. Eggleston first is Johnson now. Left field with Carter pitching is Nico Ashley. Center field is Ryan Wetzel. Right field is East step I think so, Nico was down there just throwing, getting his arm loose to play play the outfield. So four hits now in the ball game for University High, and they've got something going here. They've got them at second and first. Nobody out here in the sixth inning. Here's A.J. Simmerly, an RBI single and a fly out to center. He's obviously one for two, the shortstop. Down the way, ball one. Say hello to Jerry Keller watching. Thank you. Jennifer Johnson says, watching from Memphis. Go Cyclones. Here's a chopper to Wagner at 30. He'll step on the bag for the force. Go across the diamond and almost got him a double play ball. Nice job, Wagner. Had the presence of mind, Tommy, to step on that bag and get that lead man coming out from third. That's exactly right. Fielder's choice, unassisted five. Runner stays on, one away. I know Jerry Keller. There you go. Way back from him, me and his son played some ball together as kids, and Michael Keller. There you go. <clears throat> It's really cool who watches and listens to these. I don't know a lot of these people, but I've met Jerry, one of our Food City shows. Here's Hunter Seahorn. Strike a call from Carter. One out, one on. Cut that lead man down in a force play down at third by Wagner. Stepped on that bag. Nice job. One out, one on here. One out, should say two on. Upstairs. One on one here in the top of the sixth inning of a scheduled seven. JV game coming up next. We come back on Monday, Happy Valley, Monday and Tuesday in conference play. Play one here and play one there. We'll have them both for you. This is outside, and it's two balls and a strike. Carter brings it, fouls it back. Meredith a walk, Harry single, similarly hitting the fielder's choice. Wagner stepped on the bag down the third for the force play to erase Meredith, the runner. Hare stays at second at first is similarly, and here's Seahorn. Top of the order on deck here. Two balls, two strikes. Evan Carter brings it downstairs, and it's full count. So Evan Carter coming in from left field to pitch. Again, the fifth pitcher, Trey Shown, started. Win an inning. Carson Diller win an inning. Eggleston goes two innings. Johnson goes an inning. And now here's Evan Carter. And Evan steps off the mound and looks runner back in at second base. Cyclones, and they're all white today. Black numerals. White caps. Orange E trimmed out in black with a black bill. Good looking unis. Ball four, and they're loaded up. Top of the order for University High Cast Blevins. He's had a single in. Two tries, plus a walk. Courtesy runner number 45 for the catcher. Mr. Everett, who would be number 45 on the roster? Mr. Miller? <laughs> Henry Borthwick? There we go. That'll work. Henry Borthwick is now the courtesy runner first. Here's Blevins, and here comes University High right back. The bases are loaded now. One out. Six to three Cyclones. So got ourselves a ball game here. Carter to the belt and brings it. Way upstairs, ball one. Walk, single, fielder's choice, walk. Bases jammed here for University High. 
in the junior bucks at six and three, coming off a doubleheader win yesterday. Downstairs, one upstairs, now one downstairs. Tommy, it's 2-0. Oh. No place to put this one, big guy. Nowhere to put him. you got to throw strikes. Mm -hmm. Try to get a ground ball. We picked up a couple last inning. Yep. And 2-0 uh, -oh pitch, big hack, bad handle foul to the backstop for the leadoff man. We're at risk now to give up a couple. Yep. Cass Blevins, the center fielder at the plate, top of the order. We're in the top of the six, bases are loaded for University High and one out. Balls and one strike. How about a little 4 6 3 or a 5 4 3? Any of those combinations get us out of this inning. Too far inside to Blevins. He's just missing. Mm -hmm. Tight strike zone right now, which I like it. Three and one. <clears throat> Pitchers need to work a little bit. No place to put him. Carter Everett brings it, working from the stretch. And a foul tip, full count. Good job of Perkins to hang on to it. 3-2. Three balls, two strikes. Carter Everett trying to get a punch out here. A ground ball to the right field base hit. One run scores. They'll stop him at third. And it's a 6-4 to four ball game. RBI, Cass Blevins at a leadoff spot. Second base hit of the game for the center fielder. Run scores. And it continues one out for Jacob Hare. Nice piece of hitting, Tommy. Just hit it in between first and second in the right field. Delivers the run. That's it. We got the ground ball. Just found a hole. So here's Jacob Hare. Hare's flied out, popped out, and had a sack bunny. He's 0 for 2 in the book. And Everett. Not Everett, but Evan is still not out of the woodshed here. Base it, number five now for University High. Dismisses. One run on two hits this inning. It's a six to four ball game. Tying run out at second, and the go ahead runs at first base. Time called. Ryan Presnell will come out of the third base dugout and talk to his pitcher, Evan Carter. Have a little visit to he and Evan Perkins. Tommy, what kind of getting ready to hit summertime, springtime, warm weather, catering opportunities? You do a lot of catering? Do a lot of catering. Um, good chance to, uh, well, this weekend coming up, the Final Four, come get some nugget trays, mm -hmm. fruit trays, mm -hmm. sweet tea, lemonade mm -hmm. in the gallons. And uh, this summer, come by and pick up some trays and take to the lake. Mm -hmm. Go to Watauga and hang out. Mm -hmm. Tip the t tip, put your toes in the water and cool a of, off. A lot of people do that, don't they? Absolutely. Meeting over Carter. Let's see what he can do here. He's in a jam. Brings it. Fastball misses outside. Three and zero. Oh. Popping the leather, but it was outside of the strike zone. Three and zero oh for Jacob Hare. Carter Pollock on deck. He's catching it over here. Carter brings it. Belt high fastball, strike call right down the heart of the plate. Had to have that and got it. <laughs> Evan Carter delivers. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch running in on him. One out, base is juiced here. One run in. Here we go Six again. To four. Yep, here we go again. Full count. Evan Carter, see if he can reach back in the tank and get one here. Shoots it in the right field. He step going back. Logan will make the catch, route number two. And they don't bring him. He got halfway down. Boy, the coach is wearing him out. He came down the line. He had to go back in. That's a run. Well, he is upset, and he should be. The base runner down a third came down the line. He had to, if he had tagged, he would have scored easily on that drive out of the right field. Coach might have been watching the play instead of watching his runner. I think the runner was watching the play, too, yep. and so the coach chewing on him a little bit. That's right. Because that was run number five right there all day long. Two out to work on that batter, and here's Carter Pollock. Pollock, a fielder's choice, pop out to second, and an RBI double, a one-hopper up against the fence in deep left center field back in the last inning to play to run. Evan Carter brings it inside, and it's 2-0. 
Yeah, third base coach is still hopping around. He's, and he should be mad. That was a run. That's a 6-5 to five ball game. Kid came down the line instead of standing on the bag to tag up. Outside, good eye by Perkins to get that one. Yep. Three balls and no strikes. Here we go again on deck would be the cleanup batter, Jack Bembry. We're in the sixth inning. Six for the Cyclones and four for University High. They're a good baseball team. And there's ball four. And he walks in a run. He's throwing a lot of pitches this inning. I think he's had three balls on most hitters. <clears throat> so A.J. Zimley trots home. So look how big that base running boo-boo was for University of Iowa. So base is a little walk with an RBI, and here is Jack Bembry. Swing and a miss, strike one. Carter brings it way inside. Had to hunker down. So two runs this inning on two base hits. Base is still loaded for University High. Six to five ball game. Tying run 90 feet away. This one upstairs. Two balls and one strike. Carter brings it. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded. Tying run 90 feet away here in the sixth inning. Six to five ball game. Evan Carter, 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. He reached back to some gas in the tank and got that one. And a strikeout swinging to get him out of the inning. Two runs, two hits, no errors. They leave him full. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It is six to five in favor of the Elizabethan Cyclones. And time for a break. Brought to you by the good folks from AF ACFCU here on Elizabethan Cyclone Baseball. Ten thousand five hundred dollars in down payment assistance, and you could be eligible. That's right, Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union, helping more than fifty families achieve home ownership. And for many, down payment assistance has meant the difference between renting and owning. You could be eligible. For more information, go to the web at myacfcu.org. Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union with branches in Gray, Johnson City, Rogersville, Kingsport, Jonesboro, Norton, Virginia, in Kentucky, Berea, McKee, and Boonville, Kentucky. Myacfcu.org. $10,500 in down payment assistance, and you could be eligible. For more information, simply call 1 800 378 3778 or go to the web at myacfcu.org. Appalachian Community Federal Credit Union, proud member of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Hello to J.P. Nix out in Colorado watching, saying, Go Betsy. Say, Hello, Coach Nix. Say, Coach. Hello, Coach. We go to the bottom of the six, Perkins, Wagner, and Johnson. First pitch is downstairs and outside ball one here. Perkins, a single and a ground out to second. Six runs, seven hits for Elizabethan, and five runs and six hits for University High. So J.P. Nix is watching in Colorado. Hello to Coach Nix. Love it. Bembry, foul, bat handle foul back our way for Perkins. One ball and one strike. Coach Nix comes down out of the mountains there in Colorado, sits alongside the road in his truck, or used to last year, and listen to the broadcast. And we appreciate that very much. He says, go Betsy. Of course, he was the coach that left and stepped away from the game. And Coach Presnell, there's a strike call to Perkins down the way to the right-hand batter. Tommy, I'll say this, Jack Bembry's thrown a lot of pitches. He's still got some, he's got some pop on that leather here in the sixth inning, the starter for University of Iowa. Perkins in the right field, nice and it hit. will fall for a base hit. Perkins rifles one into right field. That's a good two-strike swing right there just to put one in play. Base hit number eight of the ball game for Elizabeth, and second base hit of the game for Perkins. Here's Wagner. Popped out and bunt popped to the third baseman. 
back in the second inning and tab back the box to lead off the fourth inning. 0 for 2 in the books. Here's Wagner. Wagner again had that big sack fly RBI. Won't miss out. Won't forget that one for a long time. That sack fly ribby down at Smoky Stadium. The plate Logan East stepped up beat Pigeon Forge on Friday. 5 to 4 and 8 innings. That was a fun one to call. Embry brings it. Wagner squares the bump, pulls it back, throw to second. He's going to be in with the stolen base. Ball skips past the shortstop and coming down to third, and he'll stop right there. There's that speed. There you go. Still Perfect. bases, you score runs. Sets it up. So it comes down to third on the throw. That would be E on, you take it on the throw or on the catch? I think it was a bad throw. E2. Shortstop didn't have a whole lot of chance to catch out. No. Wagner fouls it back. Swinging away now with the runner down to third. Wagner. One ball, one strike. I'm sorry. No balls and two strikes. Bembry brings it. Way inside. One and two. On deck is Johnson. Home half of the six, Perkins a single, stole base, and came to third on a bad throw to second on that stolen base attempt, an error charge to the catcher. This one downstairs, and a good job of Seahorn. He blocks that one to save a run. That one gets through the wickets. That's a 7-5 to five ball game. Jack Bimbry, the starter from University High. Right-hander brings it. Foul back by Wagner. Wagner came in batting 222. No homers and three RBIs in the team. 39 runs driven in so far this season, led by Wetzel's eight. Corey Russell's picked up two here tonight. Now gives him seven on the season. Bembry, new baseball, ready to go. Wagner waits on it. And he fouls it back and out of play. Wagner's having a good battle here with the pitcher. Yes, he is. Hopefully he can uh, at least just put it in play, get us a ground ball, maybe get a run in. Corey with two runs driven in today. Daly's got an RBI with a sack fly. This one misses. The count runs full now on Wagner. Emory right back at it. Swing and a miss. Blew it by him. Strikeout swinging. One away. Had a little pop on that one, too, Tommy Tipton. He did, I tell you, he's gone the distance right now, and he looks, still looks good, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Hello to Jan Broom. She's watching. Thank you, Jan. Don't know you, but that's okay. You like the Cyclones. Or UH, one of the two. Here's Johnson. Strikeout and a ground out. I know. Do we know Jan? No. Oh. Maybe UH. I'm not sure. I don't know. Because I know last year when we were doing Pigeon Forge, you had people in Pigeon Forge listening. So whoever you is, we like you. Thank you. Here's Johnson fouls back. Bad handle foul. Tommy, I'm hungry. What did you do? You went to the restaurant and grilled some hot dogs. I went down to the concession stand and. Uh, oh, here. You here. didn't leave. Okay. Yeah. And you grilled some hot dogs. I put them in the deep fryer. Okay. Put chili and cheese on them. Can you only do them for you? I can only eat two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I. Here's a base hit to right field for Johnson. Brings in the run. In from third. Drives in that run. Good job by Johnson. Miller scores from third, and we get a run back. It's a 7 to 5 ball game. Nice job of Johnson, the nine spot. Rifles one in. Base hit number nine of the ball game for Elizabeth and RBI Johnson, and that may do it. Benberg. His coach comes out and says, you know, you've thrown a bunch. You've had a heck of a ball game. And Nick Johnson just got his fourth RBI of the season, plating Miller running for Perkins down at third. One out, one on, one in. Top of the order here is Eggleston and a new man on the mound. Who we got, 23? <laughs> Bring me the roster and see what we can see. We, we're having complications on. Yeah, 
It's Esau. Esau Bird. That's right out of the book. E-S-A-U, Esau Bird. There you go. A biblical guy. I like it. So... You always look at the crowd. If the mamas are out there, you mispronounce it, you hear about it. So I guess we got it right. I promise you. I've been the uh, over the years taking more than one tongue lashing for mispronouncing a mama's child's name. Certainly not intentional, but it's Esau Bird. In relief of Jack Bember, he's pitched. Tommy, he pitched a really, really good baseball he game. He sure did. He uh, There's a lot of good hitters on our team. And he came in and challenged them. He went right after them. He did indeed, and so he'll go to work here on the top of the top of the order, Ethan Eggleston. One out, one on, one in here. It is a seven to five ball game here in the bottom of the sixth. University now gets one more at bat. You see there's Mr. Tipton right there on the screen. Look up here and wave at him and say happy anniversary to Mrs. Tipton. Happy anniversary to my wife Mary. <laughs> Nineteen years today. Nineteen years today. That's awesome. That is awesome. Not many can say that. It's not easy. Not it takes a lot of work. Yeah. It takes a lot of work, both sides. Yeah. Unfortunately, and she's we a great cook, too, so that, that, that helps. helps. <laughs> it goes right to your belly. That's it. it. Works on a man's feller's belly. That's it. Yeah, you're right. Unfortunately, in this day and age, making it 18, 19 years is not that common any, anymore, unfortunately. Here's Eggleston, top of the order. Walk, ground out to second, ground out to second, and run score when he walked back in the first. Cyclones with two runs in the first, two runs in the third, two more in the fifth, and got a run here. Seven to five. He'll go to work on Esau Bird. So Eggleston settles in, going to work against the right hander. Esau Bird in relief of starter Jack. Embry for University High. Bird brings it. Comes sidearm. Strike call to Ethan Eggleston. So Eggleston and Wetzel do up here. He's got a little Lawson Wagner move with the. Yes, he does. A little side on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Eggleston flies at the right field. Going that back, going back, going back. He's not going to get that to it. One hop the wall. It's up against the wall. Eggleston stops at second, coming to third. He'll get the windmill. Here he comes. Here comes the relay. Here's the play to plate. He's safe at home. Great piece of running that time by your courtesy runner. And Eggleston delivers a... RBI double. You give him a double or triple? That's a triple. I'm going to give him a triple. Yeah, that's a triple. Three come in, but the throw came in rather, but we're going to give him a triple. Well, he got a triple. So it's a 8-5 to five ball game. RBI triple for Ethan Eggleston. Eggleston's third RBI of the season, and here's Wetzel. Two for three with a couple of runs scored, and it's... Down and away, ball one. That's a motley looking crew down through there. You see Tipton and Hartley and Big Nick, and way down on the end is Mr. Everett. He was standing up all go flexing his muscles. Yes, we do. We have fun. But we'll go ahead and drop off that screen for the time being. You better have muscles like him to flip the tires that Coach Whitten makes you flip in mm -hmm. the offseason. Bird brings it, and it's down and away. Good eye by Wetzel. So Eggleston, a run-producing triple, makes it an eight-to-five ball game. By the way, Jacob Mullins was the courtesy runner for Johnson. There's ball four, and Wetzel draws a. One out walk. Third hit of the ball game, or third hit of the inning, I should say, for Elizabeth. And single Perkins, RBI single Johnson, RBI triple Eggleston. Eight runs on ten hits, and here's Carter. 
two for three with a double and a single and a couple of runs scored. Bird brings it. Carter takes it. Strike call. Eight runs on ten hits for Elizabeth in here. We're in the sixth inning. University of Iowa gets one more shot. Wagner in the bullpen now warming up for Elizabeth. Esau Bird brings it. Downstairs, uncontested solemn base down to second for Wetzel. Catcher was trying to handle that pitch downstairs, and Wetzel, not even a throw, down to second. Runners at second and third now. Two runs on two hits, three hits this inning for the Cyclones. And still batting, only one out. Bird brings it. Carter. Ground ball, first baseman, he'll knock it down. Run comes in, steps on the bag, two away. Runner comes down to third. It's nine to five. Eggleston scores. Wetzel stops at third. Carter does his job. Two away. Here's Corey. Corey, RBI single, Sackla RBI to walk. And a run scored. First pitch way outside to Corey Russell, who's jumped his RBI total now to seven on the season. And the club leader continues to be Wetzel. Eggleston's picked up one. Corey's got two runs driven in. Daly's got one. There's a high towering fly ball in the right center field. Going back where they get to it, and they will not. Corey, round second. Corey's chugging, and he'll put the brakes on, taking that big turn at second with an RBI double. For Corey Russell, a three RBI game for Corey. Another hard hit ball by the Cyclones. Man. Corey teed off on that one. His third RBI of the ball game for number four. He just took third, nobody was looking. University High's defense asleep at the wheel in the infield, and Corey broke to third. The third baseman wasn't there, and he gets. A stolen base. So Corey, two for two, then a walk, a sack fly, and three RBIs in this week, or on the night, I should say. There's a strike call to Matthew Daly. Fly out, ground out, and a sack fly RBI of his own for his RBI total to go up one. Daly now with three on the season. Pitching, ground ball, slap foul. <laughs> the weather is absolutely perfect at yes, the ballpark tonight. It is, no question. Good job. Thomas Dillard back with us. Will you take a nap? He came and left. And came back. <laughs> he may be working. I saw him. In, I saw him earlier. He was in some work clothes, so he may be. Uh, Maybe taking a break. Back up the middle behind second fielding. You'll have to hurry. Throw to first, and they got him. By half a step, Daly's retired, and the inning is over. But Elizabethan has a very productive inning. One, two, three, four runs in the inning. Four runs and one, two, three, four base hits. One error and one man left on. We've played six. Cyclones trying to slam the door and finish it out. They lead 10 to 5. We go to the seventh do or die for University of Iowa. We'll come back and see what happens right after this timeout from Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall on Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, providing tax, accounting, and audit services in East Tennessee for over 50 years. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, the region's largest firm, and serves individuals, family businesses, health care, nonprofits, manufacturers, and many more industries. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall's Wealth Management, celebrating their 20th anniversary. Anniversary this year, BCS Wealth Management is a full-service financial firm providing personal financial planning, investments, and group benefits. For more information, please call 423-282-4511. That's 282-4511 or on the web at bcscpa.com. That's bcscpa.com. Blackburn, Childers, and Stegall, proud sponsor of Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball.
Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. In entertainment news, this year it's all about the mini series. In pop culture news, mini everything. Because, aww. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Minis until 10.30 a.m. Six in the books. We go to the seventh inning. Colt Miller, your pitcher on the mound now, trying to close it out. First pitch inside, and the seventh inning's underway. Jake Oligny. A walk, a sack, button, a fly out. He's 0 for 1 to fish in the book. 10 to 5 Cyclones. 10 runs, 11 hits here. Top of the seventh. Fly ball left field, holding, hanging up, and it's over there to Carter. Tell you what, this team is scrappy. Oligny to second. He leads things off with a double over the head of Evan Carter in left field. That was a line shot, Tommy. That was a close line shot. It was. It froze, froze Evan out there in, uh, in left field. Didn't know where to go with it. It's funny because I tell my age, last time I said I had to swing him, I said, what is a clothesline? Clothesline shot, I guess I'll say laser shot. They said, what is a clothesline? I said, I guess that tells you where we are. Not too many people hanging out their clothes anymore, is there? That's exactly right. Caleb Meredith, way upstairs, ball one. I do remember as a kid not running in my grandma's backyard because you could get a clothesline. <laughs> For real, right across the neck. No wires? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pitch misses outside. Thomas Diller says it's Whitney listing from Myrtle Beach. Travel with the softball team. Thomas actually at the game. And, Tommy, it has been chilly and windy here. There you go. I just so. left it there, and it's still still like that. It's I left it, the weather with him. We've got Myrtle Beach weather in Elizabeth. They <laughs> got it. And it is nice up here tonight. Blue skies and warm temperatures. This one upstairs. Whitney's there watching our uh, Lady Cyclones play in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Coach Harden's got the girls there playing this week. We're going to be doing some of their games in April. Some Lady Cyclones softball when the guys aren't playing baseball. Here's Meredith, a single, a pop out, and a walk. He's one for two with the run driven in here. Struck call, left hand batting, right fielder. Top of the seventh, it's 10 to 5 Cyclones, lead man on with a double. Jake Oligny, base hit number seven of the ball game for University High. Colton Miller, pitcher number six tonight. Fouled back. Shawn, Dillard, Eggleston, Johnson, Carter, and now Colton Miller. So did you, uh, Captain George's, did you hit it pretty hard down there? I got my money's worth. <laughs> and I left with an ice cream cone. Oh. Right. Track three called. Nice job. Gone. Yeah, that's a great place to eat down there. It's, uh, it's I don't know, a hundred and some items, I think, mm -hmm. across the board. And uh, You don't come out of there full at your own fault, right? That's exactly right. Colt Miller picks up his first strike out of the season. He'll go to work on Brent Hare. Single on two tries and a hit batsman. And a ball inside. And then the next night we went to Paula Dean's to eat. It's right across the road from from Captain George's. So mm -hmm. went from the seafood to the country food. Serena Miller is watching. Thank you. There you go. She's watching. Well, she'd be proud of her son because he's doing a great job doing the PA. Big Nick. Slick Nick. <laughs> Tell you what, Mr. Hare is crowding the plate. Just He's daring to throw one to him, isn't he? Inside, it's 3-0, Colton Miller. Oligny double, opposite field, and here is Meredith. A he strike out call third, ones. and here's Hare, I should say. A single, a ground out to third, and a hit batsman. And scored a run. Miller brings it, ball four, and he'll try it to first. One out, two on here in the seventh inning of University High. Here's A.J. Simmerly. Single and three tries. The run knocked in for the University High shortstop. Good ball club there in the Watauga Valley Conference. They are six and three on the season. This being a non-conference game, of course. 
Cyclones at four and two and two outs away from going five and two. This one downstairs and away, ball one to the right hand batter. Over 100 items at Captain George's, huh? They have all the seafood you want. They had uh, some sirloin steak. They had fried chicken. I mean, it's a big salad bar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, down it's, and away. It's all up. you want. It is all you want and more. Mm -hmm. Two balls, no strikes. Two on. One out here in the top of the seventh. Cyclones up by five, trying to slam the door here. JV game coming up next. Uh, strike called. Nice pitch by Colton Miller. He got a little pop. Yeah. One ball, one strike, one out. How about a Taylor made double play right here? I would like it. Misses inside, and it's three and one. On deck would be and is Hunter Seahorn, the catcher for University High. Colton Miller to the belt brings it. Fly ball. Right field. East step coming in and it'll fall in front of Logan East step. Throw to second. Can they get him? They did. They got him at second base. Great play. Nice play. Good dig from Corey. Ball falls into right field in front of East step. He fields, throws to Corey at shortstop, waiting at second base. It's nine to six in the put out. There's two away. Runner stays at first, two down to the ball game. So a signal, single credited to Simmerly. Here's Seahorn. Two out of the ball game. Runners on the corners now. And he popped him up. This could be it on the infield. Corey Russell, appropriately enough, the big offensive man tonight makes the catch, and that is the ball game. Final score, Cyclones go to five and two on the season. University High falls to six and four in your final. Cyclones win it ten to five. We'll come back and give you the numbers right after this. Time out for our great sponsor, Chick-fil-A. You're listening to Elizabeth and Cyclone Baseball. Welcome to the Mini Morning News Show, where we are so excited about Chick-fil-A's chicken minis for breakfast that we've minified the news. In real estate news, tiny homes for those who like everything within arm's reach. In culinary news, micro food, because, you know, small plates. In entertainment news, this year it's all about the mini series. In pop culture news, mini everything. Because, aww. All right, thanks for listening. Now go put some mini in your morning with the chicken you love for breakfast. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Minis until 10.30 a.m. This is Andrew McKeon, president of Carter County Bank. Carter County is blessed with amazing characteristics. Natural beauty, caring people, and locally owned small businesses all make our community one of the best places in America to live. Remember to support Carter County small businesses with your purchases, because for every $100 you spend at a Carter County owned business, $45 stays here to create local jobs and support our schools. When you spend $100 at a national chain store, only $14 remains in our community. So no matter where you roam, hurry back home. Let's pull together to support local business and make our community even better. Carter County Bank is big on small business. Locally owned and managed to support our first pro. Back at O'Brien Villa, let's give you the numbers. Ten runs, 11 hits, one error, and four left on for Elizabethan. And for the visiting University High Junior Bucks, unofficially five runs on eight hits, committed two errors, they stranded ten. Winning pitch in the ball game, I would assume it would go to, and it will be, to Trey Shown gets the W because the run scored and they never caught up. So Trey Shown gets the W for Elizabethan, and Jack Bembry takes the loss for the University High Junior Bucks. Big night tonight. We'll have Ryan Presnell up here, Coach Presnell, in just a second to talk about it. Again, hello to Debbie Hodges. Hello to Lisa, Lisa Leo. We'll have, as we said, we'll get him up here in just a second. That will be our buddy, Coach Ryan Presnell. Cyclones got the big W again tonight. Trying to get the old camera to pull up here. And when you do this game, you're doing about 10 things at once here. So anyway, let's run down the scoring column for Elizabeth. And Ethan Eggleston, lead all man, a 
RBI triple in three at-bats, walked and scored twice. Wetzel, two for three with a walk and scored three times. Evan Carter, two for four with a single and a double and scored twice. Corey Russell, tonight goes two for two with a walk, a sacrifice fly, and drove in three. Matthew Daly, tonight, this is all unofficial, sack fly RBI, and goes over two in the book. He stepped one for three. Perkins goes two for three. Wagner is 0 for three, and Nick Johnson, big RBI single in three at bats. And with us in the press box, and get settled in here and get the camera on him, our dear friend and the guy I have a tremendous amount of respect for, Ryan Presnell. We've got JP Nix watching in Colorado. We've got Whitney Dillard watching in Myrtle Beach. We've got Jennifer Johnson watching in Memphis. We watched a <laughs> spunky baseball team come in here, but we got finally got got enough to win. But University High is a good little baseball team. Sure, absolutely, and that's why I was really happy to pick him up today. Um, I knew it would be a battle. Uh, he did too. He, uh, so the things we had to do right today were uh, running the base pass, which we did incredibly well. Mm -hmm. um, we got very timely hits from the middle of the lineup. Uh, we got one big timely hit there from Nick. Uh, I think it was in the bottom of the six. Six, right. RBI um, single. Yep. I think the nine spot. bottom of our lineup's been doing it lately. Mm -hmm. Been doing it lately. Had a little bit of a struggle today. You know, we set that seven eight seven eight nine up as a leadoff to get them over and to get them in, and it's been working pretty well. So we had a little bit of struggle with the bunt today. We got we got to do better with our bunting. Uh, but other than that, very good defensive performance. Um, I think one error on Ethan Eggleston, which I think it's been since Vietnam, since Ethan Eggleston made an error. <laughs> it's, it's been an incredibly long time. Uh, but pitching is able to pick him back up with Trey there in the first and uh, pretty much rolled on along what I thought was pretty well. Uh, one hiccup there uh, with uh, the one in inning with Carter. But you got to think, man, it's just an incredibly hard day mm -hmm. where we're really trying to get some guys some work. Mm -hmm. uh, and still compete. And when you when you can do those things, when you can compete and try guys in different spots and be a quality ball club, and win. it's a good day. That's yeah. a good day, absolutely. Corey Russell picks up three RBIs. Now i got nine on the season. Tying Wetzel for that lead. And Steady Freddy there in that shortstop spot, that four hole, was Corey with a single, a couple of sack, uh, sack fly RBI, and a double to, to play the runner. So uh, solid performance. We get ready now for Friday. We've mm -hmm. got two at Sevierville. Mm -hmm. On Friday, and then two more on Saturday, Gatlinburg Pittman, right? Absolutely. It's going to be a really tough weekend. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm a bit of a baseball sadist. I like throwing our guys in the teeth of the grinder and, and see what they do. You know, we were able to, that was one of the biggest reasons we picked today up after that rain out on Saturday was we want to see guys in positions today before we have to throw them to it for three or four innings because there's going to be some guys that threw one inning today that are going to get three or four innings. Uh, you know, Friday and Saturday, and we're going to use Lottie Dottie everybody, and I'm looking forward to it because those are the times of, of times where you get to see if you're tournament ready. Next week, we've got games here broadcasting. We've got Happy Valley here on Monday. We go to Happy Valley on Tuesday. We have Jefferson County coming in here next Saturday. I know the JV goes to Dobbins Bennett and goes to Daniel Boone next week, so it's like mm -hmm. the weather's going to work. It's going to be a busy, busy week for Cyclone Baseball. It is. is. good. We're starting to hit that uh, that midseason, hard to believe, <laughs> but starting to hit the midseason. We're three weeks old. Um, I'm just really happy with this baseball club right now. The things that we need to work on are are not big ticket items, but they are items that, uh, you know, just getting a butt down. You know, if you're going to play those big games and you go seven, eight, nine, and you get that seven hole on my eight guy, he's going to move a runner. Uh, maybe not be a bunt, but we're going to we're going to try to get that guy in scoring position for that nine and one. So we only got one out. Those are, that's something we've really got to work on. Um, middle guys swung it well again today. So let's see if we're tournament ready this weekend in mid season. That'd be there nice, wouldn't it? It would be very nice. And I, I ran the bases like J.P. Nix would have today with reckless abandon. I love it. So. There you go. And he's watching. <laughs> He'd be proud of it. He's watching my guy. in Colorado. It's We're proud. Betsy. We're proud of that guy out there, what he's doing, working a camp with uh, fatherless children. A super special dude. I learned a lot mm -hmm. in one year under that man. I'm learning from you. I've never met Coach Nix, but I appreciate him listening. says, go Betsy. And Appreciate that, all the folks watching and listening. So well, like us and share us, and we'll be back on Monday. Well, here's the thing. Allegiant Air is flying from Asheville to Denver now. So there's going to be a game where he gets in here and you're calling it, and I need that guy sitting right here calling color commentary with you. I think oh, it would be a super experience for him. I know he'd love to do that. Uh, that 
just whatever night he's here, that's given. He'll be here. Absolutely. Guess what it is? It's Cyclone. Pride. You got it. A lot of pride tonight. You got it. Good Thanks, job. Tom. Yes, sir. Brian Presley, big win tonight again for the Cyclones, obviously. Uh, NEW is a good W, and against a very spunky baseball team, Credit University I, they did a great job coming over here, giving us all we want. The Cyclones prevail again, unofficially 10 runs, 11 hits, that one error. The Eggleston, a rare one that it was back in the first inning. Four men left on unofficially, again, in the ball game for Elizabethan, and then for the University University High Junior Bucks, who fall to 6-4 six and, six and four on the season. Five runs, eight hits, three errors, and they leave 10. Again, Trey Shawn gets the win, and Jack Bembry takes the loss for University High. That'll do it from here. Again, we'll rejoin you tomorrow. We'll be live. If you've not watched the show, please give it a listen and a watch. Tom Taylor Sports Show. Uh, we'll be live tomorrow in the lobby of the Bruton Smith Building, getting ready for big weekend racing coming up here in a couple of weeks at Bristol Motor Speedway. There's where you can go anytime, even right now, and qualify and register to win tickets. We're going to send multiple winners to Bristol Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. We'll make the announcement two weeks from yesterday on Monday, April the 9th. Tickets to go to the Saturday race of the Fitzgerald Glider Kids 300. Tickets to the Food City 500 coming up on Sunday, April the 15th. So all you have to do is go to this TomDillerSports.com website backslash contest and, again, give us your name. First name, last name, town you're from, your email address. So if you win, we can obviously track you down. All right? All righty. We're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. One more thing. I want to. I don't say this that often, but we want to give a plug to Pantene Beautiful Links, growing the hair for cancer patients. And uh, once we get it uh, to the appropriate length, we'll have it cut off by our buddy at Cherokee Barbershop in Johnson City and donate it to folks that are ladies in particular going through chemo, radiation, cancer treatment. So... Uh, we're doing it. Checks in the mail, Ryan. There you go. Coach Nix has checks in the mail. I do want to meet him. When you come to town, sir, you are right here in this seat helping me call a ball game. I can't wait for that to happen one game this year. Again, PantenBeautifulLinks.com. Growing the hair for that reason. Once it gets to the appropriate length, we'll have a cut off and donate it from the weave a wig for ladies going through uh, either uh, radiation or chemotherapy. So we appreciate that very much. And, again, you can do the same. Pantene. P-A-N-T-E-N-E, PantenBeautifulLinks.com. So with that, we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. Please join us tomorrow, TomTaylorSports.com. we got a full slate of guests tomorrow. We'll be live at Bristol Motor Speedway talking racing and Final Four basketball and baseball, whatever's going on. We'll talk about it tomorrow, whether it's regional, local, or national. We do it every day for two hours, and we appreciate very much you giving us a listen. Like us and share us on the Tom Taylor Sports Show Facebook page or TomTaylorSports.com. Until then, for Coach Ryan Presnell and all the folks and Tommy Tipton from Chick-fil-A, Doug Hartley, one of our guests, and also Carter Everett, one of our guests, this is Tom Taylor again telling you, as always, win or lose, 